Okay, this is uh, the Union Tapes, episode two. Uh, we talked to Zach Shaw. He fills us in on uh, his BMX experience from the early 80s until present day and um, a lot of stuff in between. Enjoy it. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> start with the, uh, the obvious stuff first. Um, you were born and raised uh, where? Uh, I was actually born in Dorchester in, in Dorset in, uh, but I was raised in Harlow. That's where I grew up from the age of four. Oh, so four years old you moved to yeah, Harlow? Yeah, four years old and yeah, got moved to Harlow. Fair stint in Harlow then? <laughs> yeah, pretty much most of my life. <laughs> so can you remember your uh, first bicycle experience oh shit uh, I think obviously the first bicycle experience was trying to ride my siblings bikes because there was like seven of us I don't know I might have got that wrong but there was a lot of us so I was just trying to ride my sister's bikes and then I remember getting a chipper like a little yeah, you know like it was like a pre like smaller than a striker or whatever it was a chipper it, the chipper was yeah. I think the smaller Tomahawk or budgie. Yeah, that's it, like a tomahawk, yeah, yes, like, yeah. In between a budgie and a tomahawk, yeah. I don't know. But uh yeah, so I had that for a bit and then that's my first sort of memories of bikes. I remember getting a puncher on it and my uh stepdad was like, You fix it I think it was like six or seven or something and I couldn't fix it. He was like, Skip, go on. It's oh, like, man. Oh Yeah, bikeless again. That. Yeah. So, so did you experience the uh, skateboard boom? Uh, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just the end of it, you know. Did you skate or at, at that point? Like, not. I mean, obviously, you didn't skate as in skate, but like, did you have a skateboard? Uh, yeah, had a skateboard. Uh, polyprop, probably like plastic, plastic skateboard, plastic wheels. But it's like you'd see, you'd see some old boards knocking around, like wooden boards with like. Old, old wheels not plastics but yeah I kind of was like at the end of the skateboard thing was there a skate park in Harlow? there were uh, skate parks in Harlow right in that 70s because like, I know they cropped they put a massive half pipe it was a massive half pipe in Harlow and, and I, obviously because of my age at the end of it I, 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 I only ever saw the, the, the remnants of the frame which ended up going to Romford Skate Park Oh, okay. Well, so it was wood? Yeah, the metal, metal frame, metal frame, and they've had fiberglass or wood on it, but so, so people like you know, Dad Robinson and, and, and Eric, they, they would know. They experienced but, that. Yeah, that, they, they was like a few years older than me, so they would have experienced that being in Harlow. But I remember seeing the frames and me like... <laughs> so the, all the sheets have been taken off? And yeah. It's... Yeah, it was just derelict at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So you experienced the skate boom, so like... Probably BMX was what three years after, roughly three or four years after the skate boom. Yeah, you started seeing people sort of, you know, 79, 80, and then 80, you kind of see more 81, loads more 82, everybody, you know, like it, it was, it was sort of that was um, the sort of timeline for me, yeah, you know, and then obviously, crew of people because we lived in council estates, so like it was everybody had the little crew in their estate, you know, so. Well, now was Harlow like back in them days? Uh, in in what was respect? It, was it new? Was well, it Harlow, town, yeah. Was I think they built it in the fifties, fifties. So it was the first new town. Yeah. But um, it was all right, man. I don't know. Like you, obviously, you'd have your rivalries in different council states. You know, you go and fight them over there and fight them over there. And like, when we started riding BMX, it was no different. You'd have your crew from this estate, and they'd go and. They wouldn't end up fighting normally, they'd end up right riding against them or you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like yeah, a, a yeah. spot or they'd be like, I oh, can't come to our spot. Localism, yeah. Localism was yeah, alive and well in Harlow. Like if you from different council states, you know, you lived in Norfolk Town or you know. Yeah. So yeah, that was standard. How far did you live from the town centre? Lived on the edge of town. So I lived on the south side of Harlow. So basically if I'd have ridden out my back door uh, I would have probably been in Epping in like 
you know, 15, 20 minutes. On what, 20 minutes to the town? Same sort of distance? Yeah, in 20, yeah, so it was either, either way, so like, you know, right to your house, it would be like, you know, whatever, 40 minutes or, yeah. you know, 20 minutes into, it was just like, everywhere I went was like 20 minutes, I'm like, shit, even to ride to the train station was 20 minutes, yeah, right, it's like, yeah. fuck, it's like, I'm in the wrong spot. <laughs> Um, so where did you first see a BMX? That's a tough one. I, I can't recall like my first like, oh, there's a BMX. You know, probably saw it on TV. But the first BMX I remember like stuck in my head was I uh, somebody had one. It was like Huffy in bits. And I was one of the dodgy kids on the estate. I had no idea where he got it from, but he had it at Huffy in bits. And I, uh, I think I swapped it for some roller skates. I th- I'm pretty sure I swapped it for the roller skates because Joe Burlow used to make roller skates out of his house. Oh, yeah. So Joe Burlow Face Seven, and I had a set of you know Adidas trainers that he'd screwed a set of roller skates to, basically, but plating and screwed them to. And I basically swapped those roller skates for a bike in bits that I was never able able to build. I can't remember what happened to it. What Huffy was it? Like chrome one? Or? Yeah. It was chrome red, I think that was the most popular. It was there was definitely a, quite a bit of chrome on it, but that was another one that you know. Dad was like, "What's this? Skip! You can't well, fix you it. Skip! Up, no. no! Oh shit! Lost your roller skates, and fucking Dad probably skipped it because <laughs> he couldn't put it together. Like, so, do you see it on TV though? Like, yeah, because it was it was like they were promoting it heavily. Like then, like early eighties, they started to promote it like mad. And like you just, there'd be always like BMX advert or you know, rally was promoting like crazy, you know. So um, yeah. So that was, that was probably a little bit, a little bit later. Yeah, I was thinking like you're getting into like eighty two, eighty three, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but like 82, at that time, I remember I wanted a BMX for Christmas, and I think I got a trial. I mean, I got a bike, a complete. I could ride it. It's called a Trailblazer, and uh, just a rip off of a Striker, basically, but. It was that first bike. I started jumping on. It was kind of like so. Was just it just? It was just as BMX was coming in, but it was like it was, it was like a jump bike, but not a BMX. No, exactly that. Yeah, exactly it wasn't like that. Petrol tanks. No. Nope. Okay, so I remember nope. them. Yeah, I remember those as well. Yeah. Fake petrol tanks. Fake shocks. <laughs> so, what well, did you see any BMX mags like around? So I guess that'd be like eight two, eight three. Uh, honestly, for me, it was like you. It, that was even before I would go into a magazine shop, you know, and like I was young, so wasn't that young? But, yeah. Um, that I can't remember. I literally can't remember of what like maybe BMX bi weekly yeah. or like one of the older lads would be like, "Oh, yeah, I got this magazine," you know. I'd be like, "Where'd you get that from?" Like, because it was like wasn't yeah. mainstream enough. Yeah, that's right. So you'd be like, "Oh," and everybody ground the magazine. Oh yeah. I think it's like BMX bi weekly was probably the first thing that I saw from that era. Possibly. Yeah, that was an early one. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what was your first BMX? Like, you had the Trailblazer, and then like your first BMX, real BMX. First real BMX that I got one Christmas was a Peugeot, and I might have got this, I might get this wrong, you know, being an old codger and with a bad memory. It was either a Peugeot Black Lion or a Peugeot Blue Lion. I tend to think it was a Peugeot Blue Lion, blue or black Lion, one of those. And it had gold wheels, blue frame. Like gold parts. And was, where did you ride that? Just around the streets, or yeah, yes. There was um, there was a uh, hair street. There was like um, a jump behind there. So it was like an old fridge we found. We just built that into the into a, basically a massive fly out jump because it was all fly out. So yeah, yeah we just just go hair street and just send it to flat. And what was that? Were you just local buddies like? Yeah, just we just ride. Yeah, just ride around like a, a Ryan Mead. Yeah. Uh, Paul Pollard and they'd be like Matt Pollard and yeah, I'm trying to think of who rode like Mike Mallison. So they they stayed riding for a few years after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah like Rob Davis as well, you know. Yeah. Like, so but Rob lived a few doors down from me, so like you know I've got like a couple of rows down in the estate, so I'd go to see Rob and I and obviously Rob's brother Simon, who was really good, didn't want to ride with Rob because he was just his scrope little Young brother. Rob. Yeah, so me and Rob just started riding together, you know. And um, after, did you break that bike? Yeah. Yeah, okay. What yep. broke? <laughs> uh, broke on the gusset, so it's 
top tube and down tube. So it was cracked. It was cracked. Wow, it, was, it was cracked at a, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bike went in a skip. It's broken. Skip. Can't repair that. So, yeah. So back to square one. Uh, I'm trying to think because I did upgrade that bike. You know, I got like, it was like Christmas, birthdays. It was hot. You know, birthdays midway through the year. So it was like, you know, I got, I got some Z-rooms. So you... So I had, it, I had it for for me. That bike lasted quite a long time. So that, were they from phase seven? Was it? No, oh, no, they were from a bike. No, phase seven, yeah. no, that was from a bike uh, <laughs> bike shop in the Stow. I I discovered phase seven probably like six or seven months after I got that bike, maybe eight months, because I remember riding down a crooked mile from Harlow to. Oh, you rode to phase seven. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, so, well, because well, otherwise you're going to spend my money getting a train to phase seven and then not be able to afford like a shotgun two seat. Yeah. So I rode so there. Long, if you're nine. <laughs> Probably nine or ten. Ten. That's a, what, well, your parents don't know doesn't hurt. Right? Well, yeah, what your parents don't know don't hurt. So yeah, we'd be like, but they, what they didn't know is at that age I was also riding, you know, doing laps around Harlow. So we're doing that sort of mileage anyway. For, so for me to be like, oh, I know, I kind of think I know where that is, and I think I know how to get there. We'd speak to the older riders and be like, well, I just need to go down that road. So yeah. yeah it was two turns almost like, once you're out of Harlow. yeah once you get on a crooked mile it's like you end but up it, like, keep going end up in Waltham Abbey and then you've got a but that's a, riding around your own town in that little <laughs> like it's different to like going probably 15 miles to yeah maybe through multiple towns and into a different yeah but I didn't see it like that yeah yeah I didn't see it like that I was like that's my destination I didn't care what fuck was in the way I was going there that's good shit man so yeah <clears throat> So you don't know what what was after the black line? I think no, actually, I I can't tell you. I know I had a face seven street styler. So basically, Joe Burlow did had a rip off of a Haro freestyler. So I remember, I think I broke that bike, and because my dad had realised he skipped loads of bikes before, he was like, "Let's go, go quality." So let's, let's, take, let's take you to phase seven, you know. So he t- like like because I you know he knew I'd already been there. So I was like, you know, we need to go to this yard. So I went there and it was like a, a hard freestyle on the wall, and I was like, that one. And he's like, it's 185 quid. You know, this is the eighties. I was like, yeah, but you said to me, you know, new bike. You know, thinking oh, I'm gonna milk this because he's gonna make up for all those bikes he skipped. And he's like, yeah, but that one. That looks the same. So no, no, no. That's a higher freestyler, and that's a phase seven street styler. They're not the same. He said, "Yeah, but that one's fifty quid, and that one's one hundred eighty-five quid. And if you want a bike, you're having that one, or you're not having one." And I was like, oh, I "That one." So I got. I think I ended up with phase seven street styler, maybe. Oh, all right. All right. So possibly. So everyone knows that phase seven was like was, one of the most reputable BMX shops yeah. in the UK at that point in time. Yeah, it was like. The shop, you know, it was OT Cycles and Phase Seven, yeah, I think. A few, yeah, yeah, yeah it was, was like the main ones, Alpine yeah. Action. It was, it was yeah. four, so yeah. Yeah. But, what um, colour was that? Was that the white one? Chrome. Oh, the chrome one, yeah. You can't. I remember them, yeah. I, yeah. I remember them. I remember but, them being white. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's with, with a rub on stickers. I got. I think I got a chrome one because I got one with like an ovalised down tube. Because I had one with an oval down tube, so it's like, yeah, get a Phase Seven Street Styler. It's in between a. Haro Freestyler and a okay. Skyway TA. You <laughs> said so, like tear drop down to you. Yeah. I literally had that less than ten days. But oh, you broke it. Yeah, broke it down. I was, I was riding on the road. Like we've been to a jump session. It was like it was probably seven days. And I was riding down the road. Like, what's going on with this? It was like bouncing down the road. And Ryan was like. Yeah, have you seen your bike? And I was like, no, it feels <laughs> weird, man. And the, the down tube was just like, ah, off. Ah, what, ah, I hadn't even, the no, at the head tube. I hadn't even noticed the whole thing was like fully flexing. So anyway, that's what we get for 50 quid. So we took it back. Joe was like, here's another one. It's broken. It's only 10 days old. So he was like, three weeks later, maybe. Broken. And he's like, right. Went back, got another one. Two weeks later, broken. Back to Joe, and at this point, you could see he was, he was like, "Fuck, that kid's back again." Are, you know, are like, they breaking in the same place. Uh, no, I think I bent the back end of one. You know, what I was like, but yeah. it's just 
just broke underneath me, you know, I was, I was hard. So, so, how many you had? Three? I had three, three, uh, three, and then I think, he just gave me a Haro freestyle and hoped it would last, because I was like, we were looking at the, because it was completely different to the ones I'd had before, so the fourth one, I was like, look at him, and mates were like, you sure this isn't a Haro freestyle? I was like, I don't know, they didn't have any stickers on it, but it, Damn sure looked completely different from the from so I think the fourth one might have actually been a Haro freestyle because he was just like just take it don't come back you know like quality like Lydia was one of those because he knew I was going to be back every two or three yeah. weeks and I would have just carried on well, exchanging yeah, yeah. Time he's so um, it's weird though you would think that he would have said I'm going to give you this Haro no nah, there was no stickers on it yeah. but it looked it was completely different from the Face Seven Street style as in you know the gusset was exactly the same as a Haro freestyle I like the just, you know, when you look at it and you're like, yeah. but it's not, but it's not, got, but it's not got Haro stickers. Yeah, job. yeah, no, yeah, exactly that. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think the fourth one, I mean, I, I don't know how long that lasted me. It wasn't long. But what did you, what, the freestyler though, how long? Yeah, I could spray that, I sprayed it up. I think that probably went as long as five months with that bike. What, that broke? Yeah. Where? Asking me really fucking awkward questions. Gusset. Uh, it, give me the gusset. gusset. The gusset or, or the seat tube where the, oh, where the plate the was. was. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's where yeah, the yeah. one went, yeah. Yeah, one of those. And this was all fly outs, yeah? You're just breaking these up? Yeah. Because oh. you weren't riding a quarter pipe no. at that point. Well, well, no. Yes and no. Yes, I was, because I was going wrong. Oh, so you discovered wrong already? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back a bit then. So. <laughs> How did you first get to ROM? Oh yeah, that was a good one. So um, I knew the old guys were right going to ROM. So um, I think I went to Darren Robinson's house because Darren Robinson had, there was rumours that there was a ramp in Harlow or it was in Darren Robinson's garden. So I went there with Eric Steele and Eric was a bit cagey because he was like, oh, he doesn't want the younger kids riding here, you know. So um, went there and, uh, and then they, they were talking about ROM. So then Eric was like, well, I'm going next weekend. You can come with me. You know, like I'll show you how to get there. So he must have been a ball ache for him because he was just like young kids, you yeah. know. And he's like, shit, I don't need the responsibility. So me and my brother went with Eric um, to Rom first time. How did you meet Eric? Just, just, just part of the local crew? Just, yeah, part of the local okay. crew. Like riding in Harlow Town, it's just like, you know, you'd, you'd meet the crews from different estates. If, if they were cool, you'd ride with them. Yeah. So then it'd be a massive... Because I used to do ride-outs in Harlow Town and then the thing was to get in a chase with the police. Yeah. So then you'd all scatter and the police wouldn't know who to follow, you know? So like, we'd like, meet back at Valise, you know, like Valise Avenue uh, car park. So we used to do that quite a lot. That's how I met Eric. Okay. And he, he was the first person you went to run with? Yeah, he was, yeah, went on the train. train. So, yeah, went to a road to Epping station, you know, 20 minutes. And uh, went from there to, um, to uh, Elm Park and then rode from Elm Park across over into uh, to Romford. So, uh, yeah. And what was going on at Romford at, at that first time you went? Do you remember? Um, guys, well, it, it's just no. It was like it's, there's nothing specific other than I got there. You know, it was like fucking yeah. Wonderland. Yeah. You know, just through the door and like, holy shit! Like the, the size of the place to me then it's just like gigantic. I mean, it's still a big skate yeah. park now, but the overriding memory I've got from that day. He's going through the door and be like, yeah, and I'm like, riding off towards something. And then like five minutes later, and I was probably went to the snake run, I went down the snake run a few times, you know. And then five minutes later, Eric just rolled up to me and was like, yeah, 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 uh, Zach, your brother's in the bottom of that bowl. Yeah, so you better pick him up. And he just fucked off. And I was like, what? And I went over, <laughs> went over there, my brother's unconscious in the clover. Like the deep. Yeah, jumped out of half part and fall. No. He rode in, like, in fucking absolute, like, awe of the place, sat down, rode across the park, I'd gone up to the snake run, and he rode straight into a bowl. So he was in he was just like, the reservoir. Yeah, just rode in, rode in, rode into the bowl, over the bars, out, for like 20 minutes. Like, I thought, right. he, I thought he was dead. Yeah. Eric just rolled over to him and was like, yeah, you need to get your brother, he's in the bottom of the bowl, and just, he's gone. I was like, you know, we're really young then, he, he was my older brother. Yeah. So yeah, that was my first experience, just what, seeing my brother in a right old state, and that was, I think that was... So you'd been like 10 or 11? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That, yeah so, so that, that's, your, that's your memory from your first trip? Yeah. Is like, 
brother knocking himself out cold for ages, and I was thinking, well, you know, we're like, that's a, the, the people there are going, oh, we need to call your parents, or whatever, they probably didn't even say that, they are probably like, help us get him out, we're not going to call your parents, <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, shit, what now? And I think he just sat in the days, the rest of the day, we left him, didn't take him to hospital, nothing, like, you know, cracked his head out of cut. So you just yeah. carried car- 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 on riding. Sit Session, down, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. You sit, you sit over there. Maybe don't ride, hours. don't ride again. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, well. Well. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you kept, so who was yeah. the guys that were good when you was riding that quarter pipe? Do you remember like, there must've been a few standout guys there. Oh, you mean the quarter pipe in Harlow? Yeah. Okay, so Before yeah. Rom, like, Oh, that was, uh, so it'd be like, Mark was pretty good, Mark Madison, um, Ryan Mead, who used to yeah, come to I Chingford. Him, yeah. um, you know, he was a lad who put crash helmet on, he looked like Hoffman. Yeah, that's it. Like, <laughs> and uh, uh, so Ryan Mead, it's like Shane Baptiste, um, but he, they were Shane Baptiste and Justin Baptiste and his brothers, they were more flatland riders, they, they, they'll, they'll still be riding flatland in yeah. Harlow, 100%, you know, doing their own thing, hermits <laughs> of Harlow. Um, but yeah, so the main guys were riding no, Paul Pollard, so Paul Pollard, Mark Mallison, um, Ryan Mead, um, like our age group, yeah. you know, were riding the quarter pipe. And then the older guys were and then like the Eric, older guy, Darren yeah, Robinson. Eric, Darren Robinson, uh, Matt Birch, uh, Nick Lotes, and those guys. How much older were they? Was probably just a couple of years. He's probably three, four years okay, older, so I think. Bit, yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, you know, it's a fair, yeah, when, when you're you know, whatever, 12, and they're like, getting on for 16, oh, yeah, that's yeah, a massive yeah. age gap at that point, you know, it's like... Yeah. Well, there was never a track in Harlow. Yeah. Oh, there was? Yeah, there was a BMX track, oh, Harlow yeah. Rockets. Oh, I didn't know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember going there with Eric as well, when he was like, fucking kids on the berm, just fucking goes tearing around the track, just literally goes, oh, whack, and just takes fucking two kids out, we're like, I just rode and fucking took them out. And I was just like, oh, shit. They're running off home crying. And he's like, fuck off! <laughs> it was the first experience of Harlow Rockets. <laughs> so when would you say you, you like you started frequenting Rom Rocks? I remember uh. a few stories of um a few people have told me like that they they didn't know that you could ride that well until they went to Rom with you. So this is like early, you know, before you really could air a quarter that well. Because people were like, Oh they, you couldn't really ride a quarter, but then no. you went wrong with we like, Well, yeah, but it's totally different. Well, it, after that first trip with Eric, I, I knew how to get to Ron. So then that was, I used to get pound for dinner money every day. Didn't spend it on dinner money, dinner at all, lunch. I used to come home from school, raid the kitchen, and go back to school, pound saved. And that money would go for, a, like, so five quid would get me to Ron, would get me a Mars bar or something and a drink. So from that point on, I knew my way I was going to Rom every weekend, like as as much as I could. If it weren't, you know, parents, you know, telling me to do something, I was at Rom. Yeah. So that's it. I started to go there as much as so I could. So then you, you one one yeah. day a weekend you was at Rom. Like yeah. That. Yeah. If I could get there, yeah, yeah. What, was it eighty three, eighty four? I think from eighty four onwards, probably eighty four, eighty five. I was really started to eighty five. I was there, like every weekend, and then, you know, summer holidays, like, you know. I'd ride there, you know, because from Harlow you could get, like, go through a bridge, go in the back route. So it's like twenty odd miles. I only did a couple of times. So I remember we went there with um, Ryan Mead's dad took us there. You know, he went that into it. So it was like he took us there once. Was like, yeah, yeah I'm not doing that again. But I remember I was like, I've never been. You know, you could get there this way. You know, because like I took you a different route. Yeah. So that was like. You know, if you can afford to get there, I'd be like, I know I can ride there. Fucking hell. So that's like. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's 20 odd miles. Yeah. Yeah, about 20 odd miles, yeah. Which. On your own? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because the fucking other guys are like, I ain't fucking doing that. Yeah. Like, I want to go and ride wrong. Wow. And that's. You, you must have, yeah, you must have been 84, 85. Yeah. So you didn't go to King of Skate Parks there in 84? No. No, because I, I just didn't know it was on. I just didn't okay. know the events were on. Like you know, like I said with the BMX magazines, I didn't know where to go. BMX magazine. It, it was literally like, you know, I, I think the, 
like the first time I started getting into BMX magazines was probably as, as late as 86 like you know like yeah, really yeah. like oh yeah, they're, they're, in, going on, yeah. they're in the shops you know it's pretty late yeah yeah because then it's starting to dip already you yeah, know like yeah, all these mag- yeah but then the publishers have had time that had time by that point to get lots on the shelves so then it was available do you know what I mean yeah like 8586 it became available yeah, yeah, even though it was dipping yeah who, who was the uh who was the standout riders when you used to go wrong then, like 84, 85? That was Marco. Uh, and um, Stumpy. Terry, yeah, Terry, yeah. Crazy Legs. There was another crazy, well, I can't remember his Steve name now. Steve Baldry. Yeah. yeah. So, but Stump, Stumpy was like, he was stand out. There was, Marco was just another level. Because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, you know, I remember going there and watching, I think it was him and there's a guy who used to ride for Rally probably uh, one of the um, who were the guys who rode for Rally not, not Danny Stabelli he was a young one right? so there was like Craig yeah, Schofield Craig Schofield so Marco and basically they were like chased each other around the park and like I was like what the fuck and then Craig bailed out Marco just went burning into the performance bowl and then just did a massive air I mean at the time it's probably five foot but then like on the way in he just no hander but not like a, su- like a suicide yeah. no hander but probably not even hanging onto the seat you know what I mean just yeah. loose whoosh, yeah I'm doing a no hander on the way in that guy was a lunatic yeah and I see him like jump the fences and like into the track because he used to be a BMX track at Ron yeah that's right yeah and like yeah but that was yeah they were the standout guys and like Eric was a yeah. bloody good rider at Ron I never saw Jess there much so I don't know when he went there but like I either wasn't paying attention, I was too busy riding, or just like, but yeah, stand up riders was probably Marco for me. It was like, yeah, yeah, Marco, when I first started yeah. going, I was just like, after that, when I got, when I could ride the park, didn't take much notice. Send it. <laughs> so yeah, Marco uh, was, yeah, he's a one off. So. Yeah, he was. Okay. Anyway, I remember in 84, 85, or eight, no, by 85, he was gone. So like in the early days, yeah. if anyone went to Rome in '84, they came back and had the Marco story. Yeah, like that. He was just because he's he, that guy, you know. It was that good as well. So he's like, you'd be like, <coughs> I think I remember watching them because they, they used to because there was a BMX track there. They used to race, <laughs> put a gate up and race. I'm seeing like fucking 360 in the middle of a pack and then just burn off like in the middle of a race, and you'd be like, nobody did that. Yeah. Back then, he didn't give a shit. Like he was so good. Yeah, you, I'd, I'd like to know what happened to that guy. No, to be he, he was, he, yeah, but that was he was probably one of my definitely one of my standouts when I went there. Like the early years, it was just like, oh. Yeah, I, I think he, he he didn't even see yeah. eighty five. Yeah, yeah. Stuppel as well. I think were gone. Like, yeah, a couple of the big names were. were not I, saw, yeah, I don't think I saw Stuppel right. Yeah, Ron. I saw him once. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So after Ron, where? Would you have ended up like 85, 86? You, you had been like, what, Ching, you went to Chingford in 86. Yeah. What was before that? Nothing, just ROM. I suppose it would have been. Just ROM. It? Yeah, just ROM. I got, like, you know, there's was, was ROM and then just riding in Harlow, the spots we made in Harlow. So it's like Harlow Rockets BMX, BMX track, which was probably, that was gone by 86. You know, Distant they memory. just, they just, yeah, just bulldozed it, flattened it, you know. And then there was a bunch of uh, council vans parked on it. You know, that was it. It's flat a whole lot. They weren't built flats on it or something? I guess. No, literally just used it as a council storage. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you, you must have discovered Chingford via the Max. My, I must have. I think it's like seeing pictures of probably the quarter pipe. Quarter pipe weren't there until. What was that? The quarter pipe was made so of the original first? half pipe. So, what, so the original half pipe? No, no, originally. There was a quarter pipe, yeah. but it was like in '83 or '84. But I, I mean, like it was either it was either a, I saw it in a mag, or the guys had talked about it because Eric might have Eric been, or Darren, okay. you know, had mentioned that oh, there was ramps there. You know, you, you don't need to say much else at that time. Yeah, probably still, you don't need to say more than that to me. Like, oh, is there? Chingford. I'm going to go and find yeah, out. You know, so yeah. You went. I remember I saw you there in a, on a Vincent. Vincent so Airzone. At this point, you was on Vincent Airzones. Yeah, 
that must have been after the Phase Seven Street Style. That must have like literally, it, it must have been because I, it must have been after the, the Haro. Yeah, the Haro, whatever it was. Thanks, Joe. Um, and you, uh, that was '86, and that okay. was the first year that that half pipe started appearing in the mags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I know that like Craig and Eric and those guys, I think, was going there yeah. before it got extended. The first time I went, it. It's just half pipe. It was the half pipe, and it had a new section on the end, which was the channel. If you remember the first incarnation, it had the channel. And the first time I saw you, you had you jumped off Mark Watling's old trick ramp, which had been donated to the pool. Can you remember that? Yeah, jumping out the yeah, that's it. Out of the pool into yeah. the into the grass. Yeah, that was the that was the first time I met you. It's probably what broke the air zone I first time around. Broke the air zone, yeah. <laughs> well, that was the first one. Yeah. yeah, that was the first first one I had. Because that was another one where I sent it back to Bernie Vincent. And, uh, because, like, you know, like, when the Airzone came out, like, Peppy Winder was killing it. Man, yeah. So you'd be like, oh, yeah. You know, I wasn't worried about Paul Hudson. I didn't want those bars either. Right? No, I didn't. No, it was yeah. like, Peppy Winder was like, he was the shit. Like, you we saw him on BMX Beat. Maybe he was as early as that. Yeah, yeah. And he was roasting everybody. He was yeah. going so high. I was like, okay, that's kind of like, and the price it was like 79 quid frame forks yeah that's right yeah, it was English right? yeah so I, was like, I went to uh, custom riders and got that and remember 79 what? quid 79 quid I think yeah frame fork yeah yeah take it back yeah another one yeah how long that last a few weeks but maybe maybe a month I don't know because they were brazed weren't they I, I remember they broke in the same place yeah know. every time every single time same place so I think I had three of those and then on the third one I was expecting a fourth one as you do you know under warranty nothing no no response nothing I think Vincent I think they, uh, they, they were like yeah they were like shit everything's breaking and then basically like I sent it back I know it arrived there and I never got a response never got a reply that might have been the nothing yeah. that was the end of them and then I was like bikeless and that was 86 yep end of 86 and then I I got got a skateboard for a few months so I started skating with all the guys in Harlow where did you get did you get a new skateboard or did you get one got, I got no I got a new one I went and bought a deck because I I can't remember if I was earning money it's probably still had a paper round then um, I got a Skull Skates Mondo or something like that it was like it was like a it was a replica Hasoi board Joe yeah. It was a knockoff Hussey board <laughs> from Joe Burlow at Phase Seven, basically. So I had that, and then that's when uh, I had that, and then I went to the whole shop. I think that must have been eighty seven though. No, it was eighty six. The picture we were just looking at was. Um, but I'm sure I won the bike Dino there. De Luca. But, but what, no, what? It was the year after. Dino De Luca was a year after. Dino De Luca was eighty six. So the I must, year Hussey came, which. So I must have got a profile then before, because like. I'm thinking I had a skateboard. I either had a skateboard for a very fucking long time, or I had it for six months or four or five, six months, and then I bought a profile or ProLite, not profile, oh, ProLite. Okay, ProLite. ProLite, because they would get uh, Grant from Cycles were knocking them out for forty nine quid. So yeah, well, what, what, the Craig Campbell one. Or no, the normal one. Normal one. Normal Craig one. Campbell one was well, sixty nine. Oh, that's it there. yeah Craig Campbell was like light blue it's like 69 quid chrome yeah chrome or light yeah, blue yeah and, a, and a, uh, the other one was like the only difference is it didn't have a loop tail and it was 49 quid I was like 49 quid okay I think I've seen a picture of you riding a performance on that yeah and a pool yeah yeah, yeah that's it alright I said it was a filler there yeah so yeah there was, was a filler yeah, yeah. Had a pro light yeah. after the Vincent's yeah okay yeah but I had to wait a good few months for that <clears throat> Because I had enough money to buy a board, and I was like, "Well, I can session with the guys, you know, so in, ha- in Harlow." Skating so skating, doing to, street skating, yeah. Starting to take over in '86. Yeah. yeah, and that's when I. Had the board, and that's when yeah. you got the. Board. That's when I broke the air zone and was like, just got the board and did that for a few months, you know. Uh, and the uh, what about the uh, the quarter pipe, Darren Robinson's quarter pipe? Was that still? I don't know what happened to that because Mark Mallison had by that point had, had a quarter pipe in his mum and dad's garden. It was the one with like. No, no platform, no coping, and you could only see four foot of it. But you know, down the side of the house. Yes, yeah, yeah that's it. So you have to, yeah, you have to ride it and like land 
precise because if you don't, you hit the hit the house or hit the fence. So it was not an option really. You had to ride it really precisely. Ride in what what way? Our way or the other way? Uh, if you went the opposite way, so uh, right to left, you could hit the house. If you, if you went our way, you had to jink out past the house and then land good, otherwise you hit the fence. But uh, you could over-rotate and hit the house. Yeah. It was sketchy. It was sketchy at best. You know, that ramp was put together because that that, all that wood was borrowed from building sites in Harlow in shopping trolleys. So I ended up at Mark's place and then Eric helped us build it. All right. So, and I'm jumping backwards and forwards no, in the timeline right, here, yeah, but yeah, 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 it was yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's all right. So then it was 87, you had a skateboard. That's it. That's how you ended up at the whole shop. Yeah, cause, because, like, I saw it was the shit, 87, 86, 87, that was his, t- that was his year. Yeah. And like, you know, he was amazing skateboarder. So um, I was like, yeah, I want, like, of course I wanted to go to the whole shop because the BMX was there as well. I was like, I saw there, I want to go and see a soy skate half pipe. So yeah, went went there to go and go and see Hasoy smash that half pipe, even though you know probably wasn't that good. That the half pipe there is, it was good to us, yeah. But I mean, like to him, like that half pipe was pretty tiny because I I saw him skate that on the road. Yeah. That was a big ramp at the time, and he fucking. Oh, you saw him when he came over for that at Latimer Road. No, I think we talked about this actually. I didn't see. I've been to that road, but I didn't see him skate there. I'd seen the pictures from the magazines. Yeah. Okay. And I went there after that, and I was like. Holy shit! Because I saw Greg Gu- Guillot yeah. ride it, so but we'll go back a bit. But yeah, I went to the whole shop with with a skateboard, basically. And in '87, were all your BMX friends, bar a few, taking up skateboarding? Uh, they had a board and they had a bike. Okay. Whereas I had a board and I probably didn't have a bike because just you know, I couldn't afford one. Yeah, because that was what the magazines were sort of. Pushing as well, yeah, like pushing, bikes yeah. And boards, like Counterculture, yeah. have it both. Yeah, you know, can you afford it? Can your mum and dad afford this? Do it both. Do both of them. You can have a board. Yeah. yeah so yeah, time. not for me. Um, and you end up at Whole Shot. Yeah. And uh, and then what happened? Because I quite like this story. Well, I like. So we went to Whole Shot on the train, right? And you know how sketchy it was there, right? So we went to Whole Shot on the train, and then I bought a raffle ticket. 50p I think it was I was like spent the last of my money and then won the prize in the raffle which the top prize was a Haro FST so won the bike in the raffle yeah I was like no fucking way I was bikeless on a board go to, and then Hasoi I went to the whole shop to go and see Hasoi basically so he hands me the bike so I have to go out there and he, he's like dude you know like awesome fucking enjoy this what a rad bike and like I was like it's fucking I saw it you know he shook his hand took the bike off him and I was just like that's just bizarre like you know because he was like you know he's a hero yeah, he was like, I was like yeah. fucking you know Demi got a skateboard at the time and I was like and I just was like I don't know like trying to make sense of it all you know like so what was it, did Wilkinson give that away as well was it just I saw it yeah, well, I think it was both of them okay. stood there, yeah. And I was, I was like, yeah, was, yeah, you know, Wilkinson, yeah, he's rad, you know, but yeah. I was like, fucking hell, it's Hoy. He's, oh. no, he's next level, you know, like, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, so I got a bike home. I remember calling my mum and dad, go to, going to a pay fine, call my mum and dad, oh yeah, I've, I've won a bike at the whole shop, at the, at the, at the thing. Yeah, and? I'm like, yeah, can you come here and pick me up? Because I don't want to walk this bike outside, you know, because, like, I'm going to get mugged. And I don't want another bike. And they were like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Of course you've won a bike. Yeah, yeah. Didn't believe me <laughs> at all. Yeah, mate, you get, get yourself home. You know, I was like, fuck, you know. Anyway, I got the bike home. So and you I, navigated yourself back home? Navigated my way back home. When I got home, just like by the time I got home, I, I'd made the decision. And I gave my skateboard away to one of the old school skaters who bought, whose board was completely trashed. And my board was still in fairly good nick, which is surprising for me. So I gave him the board, which went to his house. I was like, rode the FST there with the board. I was like, Darren, I know your board's fucked. Have this board. I was like, I'm gonna ride bikes. Cause it was just, it was just a weird situation for me. Cause I like, know that shit didn't happen yeah. to me, you know? So I was like, I just stopped skating and started riding full on from that point. 
I met you again, I think. Yeah, back at first, Chingford. Yeah, first game at Chingford. Yeah. On bike, yeah. Probably fucking like first weekend that came along when I got a bike, I probably we rode down a crooked yeah. mile and straight to Chingford. Back on it. And then that was, Chingford was like a local after after you won that bike, right? Yep. That was it. Like, I just, yeah, because. But I think at that point, 87, right? So, you know, I was going Romford and Chingford. Yeah. And I think. Uh, I think around the time sort of Sean was maybe was meanwhile. he was, oh meanwhile as well yeah meanwhile was I got, do you know what meanwhile was in between was 87 I mean, meanwhile was sort of 86 eight, 87. 87 yeah because I think I went, I went to meanwhile on the pro light possibly oh, right. must have done it would have been a Vincent sure. no, no I told you oh, my memory Vincent, was bad yeah, yeah. maybe the pro it was light, all yeah. a, it was all a blur for me because I was just like just trying to do everything so I was like, there's a ramp there, I'll go there. Oh, that's happening now, I want to go there. You know, I was like, but to, to get to Meanwhile, you must have seen a mag. Yeah, but that must have been, that must have been 88 or 8, 89 even when they were doing the... No, it was, when like was 86, it? 87. When was that doing the, they were doing the Swatch stuff? You know, we like to do... Yeah, you go. Yeah. So yeah, I would have seen that and gone... Yeah. Go in there. Where's that? You know, find it on the map. You went with... I went with uh, Shane Baptiste. Um, uh, Justin, probably Mark Madison no, at first when we went there yeah. as a crew, and then uh, just ended up sort of becoming friends with Greg Giot, and then like I'd, I'd go to Meanwhile or I'd go to Chiswick and hang out with Greg at that time. Cool. And then we end up going Chingford almost every weekend. Yeah. Once that summer came, yeah, and we also would end up going Crouch End, Stevenage, yeah. So Shaka, Condi, yeah. like those guys would come to Chingford, then we'd go back into London because yeah. Shaka, because I'd stay with Shaka recently because he lived on the act in Fifty uh, Second Park side. Yeah, that's it. Um, in Acton, so we'd go and stay with him. And they had that quarter pipe out there, didn't they? So. There's quarter pipe in the in the in the um, park there. Hmm. Yeah. Youth 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 group or something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So remember uh, Greg riding that quarter pipe and he's like he did a candy bar and just didn't get his foot back over and he just rode straight into a tree but with his foot out <laughs> that just was me it's <laughs> like got a knee in the face just you know how tall he was just straight off and then like after this sort of period of time there, there was no hole shot in 88 no but you started getting like pictures in well, you have pictures in Rad first that first picture I ever had in a magazine yeah, yeah. Right. first picture I ever had in a magazine was R.A.D or was it was it R.A.D then must have been R.A.D yeah, then just, t- just turned wasn't it yeah and I remember uh, from the Chief of Jam and then uh, Marfleet because Marfleet lived in Ongar so he weren't that far from Harlow and he, he said to me I, I think we met at Chinkford and he was like oh yeah I think we have, I went to Chinkford and he was there and he was like I've seen your picture. I was like, no, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, you're in a magazine. I was like, fuck off. You know, he's like, he's like, no, you're in a magazine. You're in RAD. And I was like, he am, a am I? Yeah. It? And he was like, yeah, yeah. And he, he was like, come on. And he, he was like, we put, put the bikes under the ramp, left, left the bikes with you lot. And we drove to a local shop where he knew there was a copy, you know, where they did yeah. th- those magazines. And he's like, here you go. Got one off the shelf. I think he might have even bought it. You know, it's tight it was, yeah. It, was that that's it, yeah, on the... On the small section. And it was on his bike. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That's because I broke... I probably broke my bike. So that's unusual. I broke the bike. I can't remember what I did to my bike. I know it's trash, so I had to ride the uh, Marfleet. So you, you ride in B Group, I think, in that... In that gym. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Because there was only like three or four people in A Group, I think. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the first time I met Mark Atkins, because they had out the uh, small section into the big section. And he thought, well, you're either riding that section or that section, because he's a BFA, he was a BFA guy, you know. So, like, as I aired out of the small section into the big section, he's dropping in and was like, whoa, and just took it, and he was out, out of the A, a group comp, crashed. Oh, it finished it? Yeah, that was the first time I met Mark. Wow. That was the first time he met me, it was probably the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was, was you riding BFA contests? He wasn't even a I, BFA contest no, at this point? No, no wasn't riding BFA contest I went to BFA contest when I met Greg Giot because Greg was like oh you should enter a BFA contest and I was like 
And yeah, you went with him. Yeah, right then. Yeah, just went with him. Yeah. Well, can you remember that where that was the first one? I think it might have been the NEC. It might well have been the NEC the first one because they were quite big ones when they did the NEC ones. It might have been the NEC. I don't remember Greg Giot riding to uh, a porn voiceover. Yeah, Sat Howard was. <laughs> he was just like put the tape because yeah, you give him the tape he put a tape on and it was just basically a fucking porn yeah, voice over yeah, just yeah. yeah and he was I could see him riding like just laughing so hard and he, you know, people panicking to try and fucking turn it off you know it's, yeah, just amazing typical Greg <laughs> oh man <laughs> um, yeah I mean, well, like, so you, you, and then you end up getting in like Freestyle magazine as well, quite a few times. Well, was so, that South Sea or something? Yes. Yeah, again, we went. We did a trip. Me and Greg went down to uh, South Sea, and uh, I think it was like a little picture on the front cover. That's it. Yeah, that's it. A picture of Greg. I think Greg was on the cover. Yeah. Yeah, because he was smashing it as yeah. usual. You know, made it look easy. It was like blowing a gale. It was horrible. And what was? What was that just half pipe? Half pipe jam at South Sea. Yeah? Can't remember. I it wasn't remember. King of Concrete, was it? Or it wasn't called that. It was no, I, was, I don't know. South Sea Jam. It might have been King of Concrete. I think it was the year before they started. It might, yeah, it, maybe it was just a South Sea Jam. I don't know. But the first time I went there was with with Greg. That's yeah, it got. Because I was, you know, I was, look, even though I've been riding for quite a long time, that whole scene was relatively new for me, like doing contests and stuff like that. But like. Greg sort of introduced me to that whole side of it, which I, you know, I've done Chinkford Jam, but I didn't really yeah, know you, about yeah, BFA stuff. Yeah, into like no. BFA, which is a totally different exactly, yeah, yeah. Who, who was riding, the, like, at the BFA contest when you first started? Uh, as, well, the obvious one, Jamie, Jamie Beswick, uh, David Castledane, uh, Scott Carroll. Um, Jesus Christ. I can't remember from, who else from my age group. I genuinely can't remember. As if there's, there's quite a few, but, like... Like it's, it's kind of weird because like Carl Denton, was he probably Carl Denton yeah, yeah, Carl Denton, bless his poor old mum, having to work five or six jobs to keep him in his in his BMX career. He was a lovely chap. Come on, mum, work harder. I need a new spray tan. And when, when was it that you started sort of venturing? Like you made like that Northern connection. Was that through BFA contests or was that through something else? Uh, so you you was in. You're quite frequent in RAD, like which was quite rare for BMX at that point in time, because it was mostly skating, wasn't it? Yeah. So then suddenly, like a few pictures would come up of like a couple of BMX jams or contests, but quite often you'd get one in there, wouldn't you? Compared to like, well, I guess so. I, I don't know. I guess because it's like, say there's like two yeah. pages in a mag. Yeah. Quite often, what like, in one year, like one of them pictures would have been you. Possibly. Which was quite. Which was quite lucky, wasn't it? Well, Obviously, yeah. But like, it, that's the way, considering the amount of people that were like... Man, I was loose, so that was yeah, good for yeah. a photo, I guess. But you, you ended up at the at the cow jam or something, is that... <sighs> Jesus Christ, you're pulling it well. Oh, so I was, I was at work with my dad in Finsbury <laughs> Park, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I went into the newsagents at lunchtime. And like, bear in mind, they used to ride with you a lot. Yeah. I went into the newsagents and I pulled RAD off the shelf thinking is there going to be any BMX in it and I'm going through it and then you you pop up doing a manual a yeah. one footed manual in one of their mags right at the cow jam yeah but a cow jam was probably like what cow, cow jam was probably in like um, a, a Graham's garden or something I can't remember do you know what I mean like it was um but, they had, I think they had a Graham lake Critch. jump. They had a lake jump. Lake jump. Thing, right? So that was a wave on carnival. Okay. Right. right. So, but how did I? How did I? I don't know. I can't even remember how I got there. I did, can't. I can't remember. Did I can't. you end up going with TLB or something? What, was there a there story? There you go. So, like, so, right. So we're doing. So, so, I can't remember. I think I was. I can't remember how this happened, you know. So I'm, I'm completely <laughs> baffled to how... Anyway, so I met, I met like, you Nick... you TLB through Greg or something like that? Possibly. I don't know, because I was always out... I'll be at South Bank riding, or, you know, yeah. we were always out yeah. riding, so... But I remember meeting TLB and Nick... Philip. Philip. And then they were like, oh, you know, 
there's you know you've got any spots around there that you're right and I was like oh yeah I've been wanting to do this for ages and I was just shoot some pictures so um, and we shot some pictures and then they were like I think Nick said you shot oh, pictures where? Uh, so South Bank you go a bit further on you know where they've got the, the fucking big Ferris wheel Millennium whatever the fuck it is what is it? Um, the one with London the pod, Eye. Pod, London Eye that's it sounds like a big wheel doesn't it? Um, just where that was to be and there's like some there's some really weird banks they're like big they're about this I don't know probably six seven foot tall but there's like I don't know it's like serrated, serrated banks it's really weird so I've stepped banks but I wanted to ride in and drop in and just, just ride in into stuff and just doing different stuff and we went and shot some pictures there and then I think Nick was saying that there was something going on at um, um, Shrewsbury yeah so I was like, all right, cool. So I jumped, I, I just said, yeah, I'm, I'm up for it. And I just jumped in the car with TLB and Nick. What, that but, day? Or it was arranged like a few days before? Probably that day. I don't know, or the day after. It was yeah, like, it was, it, it was, it was like that. Yeah. So because like, we, like you, you know, I knew quite a few people in London, so I was probably, I probably went to stay with Nick above the bank of Tokyo. I don't know, it gets all a bit weird now, because like, we knew some oh, people. Oh, Nick Phillip, okay. No. Who? Not Nick Phillips, there's another guy we knew in London, and his dad was the caretaker for the Bank of Tokyo. Alright. So, I would go into London, and then rather than go home, I'd go and stay over the Bank of Tokyo. <laughs> so we just buzz up and go and stay there. And where was that? It's right by the Bank of England. It's like literally there's a like square mile there. The city, yeah? Right in the heart of the city. Okay. So we'd be like, I should go stay at Nick's. You know, go and smoke, and like ride our bikes around the Bank of Tokyo. <laughs> It was oh, nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we could go there. Anyway, so I think it might be the next day. So I think I stayed at Nick's, and then jumped in the car with them, went to uh, Shrewsbury, and it was the first spine round. Spine round, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it would have been. I would have yeah, so, one, yeah. yeah, so that's uh, that's it. That's how I met met those guys. I think just probably got introduced yeah. maybe not I don't know before, but yeah, yeah and, and like, then I just like, like we're going before. yeah and then jumped in the car and went up north and then so I broke my bike at that jam I don't know what bikers are riding broke my bike at the jam and then met Jim and John Taylor because I don't think I've met them before then or maybe I'd seen at a BFA contest I can't remember and then I was like I ended up jumping in a car with Jim and then I went to stay at Jim's in Crewe it was, it was the timeline I'm not sure of right but I do know I jumped in the car with Tim and Nick but at the time we didn't have mobiles it's not yeah. like you're going to stay in touch with somebody yeah. so I must have arranged it and said meet you here on this day and it was like a matter of days if not hours and I just jumped in the car and went, went up north you stayed up north yep what was the can you remember the journey for like with TLB and Nick Phillip what, what did you speak to them about or did you just keep quiet like you was young then fuck off I didn't keep quiet when I was oh, that really? age no. no so what, what was that Not bad enough now what was that journey then do you remember what, what no because it's like just talking I don't know I don't know I genuinely don't know but I jumped three hours in the car well right? like how bizarre is that right so like they, this, these people it's Nick Phillip and it's TLB TLB's like the most famous like the well known BMX photographer of an era, right? Yeah. And for skateboarding and BMX. Yeah, so I ended up in a car of them going up north. They're like, there's a contest up there. Do you want to, we've got room, do you want to go? I was like, yes. That's surreal. Man. Yeah. And then you can't remember anything. No, really all I remember is like so I went up there with them. <clears throat> I was probably asking the most inane <laughs> questions. And they're probably like, fuck's sake, why did we bring this kid? You know, I wasn't a kid then. You know, I was, I was a bit older. No, but, was, but, as, yeah. but at the same time, they're like, they, they they're like, they invited me because they knew I'd get to a ramp, get hyper, get overexcited, and yeah. fucking send it. That was that was, that was standard for me. Yeah. So they're like, and then you stayed in crew for what would you do? Like a couple of weeks. <laughs> no, so so I went to so I ended up being Jim Tomlinson. Um, then I ended up. I travelled to Crow, stayed at his place probably for a week, and then Chris Hamer was like, "Well, why don't you come up to the farm in Keithley? You can stay it." He didn't tell his mum, of course, because he had a ramp up on the top of uh, Ilkley Moor. So I was like, "Yeah, all right then." 
So I got the train and then went to Chris's. I think I'd fallen out. I was having, I think I'd fallen out with my parents or like with my mum or whatever was going on. I was just like, fuck it, I'll go and stay there. So I was like, all right, Chris, yeah, I'll come and stay at yours. So then I ended up in Keithley, staying at Chris Hamer's mum and dad's farm. You didn't have any clothes? Or what was just had my yeah, bag. Like a weekend bag, so, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, where that's where Travelling Zach came from, that bit. Oh, that's because that was one of the captions, wasn't it? Yeah, because I was just jump, jumping the car and going. Yeah. I didn't care. I didn't care where I was going to sleep, didn't care what, what was going on. As long as I got to ride my bike, I didn't care. Yeah. So. Was that Dave Slade captions? More than likely, sounds yeah. Like one of these, yeah. Yeah, it sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how, that's how I met, that's how the bike guy ended up up north. That's how you got that connection. Yeah, so I remember you was like you was good friends with those guys, and it was they lived a long way. Yeah, because we it, it was simply from going and shooting some pictures with TLB and Nick, and then going yeah, I'll jump in the car, and then just going uh-huh. and, ju- and just going and see what happens, you know. Yeah. And then I met that crew, which is actually a really good crew. And the weird thing was, is like they'd already been hanging out with Eric Still because he'd moved up north right, yeah. years before, and I didn't know that at the time. Because oh. he lived in, I think, in Chester, Crow, right? Chester, 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 yeah, Chester yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't know he was there. I just know he fucking weren't in Harlow anymore. Weird. Random. Yeah. So yeah, <clears throat> good crew, good crew. That yeah, all. yeah. What was that? Chris, what was the house that Chris ended up living in, in his on his own? That was in Bury. So he's okay. he's he's um, grandma passed away. And okay. basically, uh, his dad inherited the house, and his dad lived in Germany at the time. I think his dad was a teacher, and he just said to Chris, "Look, you know, can you can you house it while I'm sorting out the details of what go?" So Chris ended up staying in that house for quite a number of months, um, I remember, yeah, which I remember. is why we ended up going up there and and hanging out there. Yeah, yeah, I remember that place. I remember that place. I fucking remember getting thrown out of the bed. My ghost story from that house. <laughs> <laughs> being pushed down into the bed and then slung sideways what? into the sideboard at that house. Well, you, well, that was his nan then. Well, I don't know what it was, oh, but yeah. I know I was like, "What the actual fuck?" Southerners in my house. Southern, dirty southerners in my house. Get out! But that was that wasn't that was like in the in the in the in the farm as well. Like me and Chris both saw a ghost in the farm up on the Oakley Moor. Like both said, "It's like what the f-? like did you just go to the?" Are you there, Chris? And he's like, I thought you just went to the toilet. And I was like, oh, fuck. There was no en- entry into that room. I saw somebody walk walk to the door, open the door, walk out the door. Both of us saw that early in the morning. Well, that's a pretty good fucking... <laughs> yeah, so we were like, what the fuck is going on? So, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <clears throat> so, then, like, so, we're up to like the, the late 80s now. Yeah. And BMX is kind of like, it's done, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it was... Yeah, eighty seven. Yeah, just you know, eighty eight was a really good year, but then we didn't didn't kind of realise it was dying until we got to like eighty nine, and we're like, oh, it's dead. Well, like, yeah, even before that, probably. Yeah, but you know, like it was when fully buried by that point in time, like well, when the magazine started doing like, oh yeah, yeah, funky colours, yeah, man, fucking psychedelic, yeah, let's, and I remember that RAD colour where they did the psychedelic cover, and I'm like, yeah, polka dot bike and all that shit, and I was like. Yeah, Something's wrong. <laughs> Something's wrong. They started spray paint, using spray paint. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so '89 is like a massive skate boom. Well, it's been going for a few years. Yeah. And BMX was pretty much finished, unless you went to like, unless there was a few people in your. You had to travel basically. Yeah, to meet a group of like-minded. Travel. Not even in a group. Miles, yeah, yeah, like you'd like one or two people yeah. maybe in a yeah. yeah. So you'd have to travel to go and ride with them. That's why Chinkbrook was such a good location because like that's what was happening. Yeah, because there was probably yeah. five or six people that yeah. rode BMX there. Yeah. So. <clears throat> and then that sort of evolved into like people travelling to like them jams and then jams like South Sea and stuff. Yeah. Started getting big, not because a lot of people rode. But because everyone made the effort to go there, yeah, it was the only if thing. You remember the first, the first King of Concrete? Did you go to from being up north? Y- I've got some yes, I got. I jumped. I was in the because I was living up north then. That's what so I, I came down with uh, Jim. Had a um, 
an old blue Mercedes because his dad owned, owned a like Mercedes repair garage, so he, he basically rebuilt this car. We went down in. There's me, Jim, John Taylor, um, fucking hell, who else? Probably uh, yes. Graham Critchlow, Chris Hamer. Yeah, all pulled in the Merc. Yeah, went down to South Sea. And that that was the one with like the wall ride, the, where you did the wall ride out of the bowl. Yeah, or that was, was it. That the year before. No, that was. That I was think it, yeah. that was the year. Yeah, because it was because Mike Rose, because Mike Rose who. Um, Ended up being the editor for Dirt magazine, so basically he was Cal. Yeah. Mike Rose yeah, was Cal. So that was Cal, Cal thing. So like we were basically, he made some t shirts, you know, sort of same, similar idea to when the you know, Union t shirts came out back in Chingford when you, <laughs> you, when you were hand drawing yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. But yeah, I, was, I went down with that crew. Where did you meet Sean Scarf? Because he came into it around this point. In time. Oh, that's a good one. So Sean Scarf. So I'd, uh, so if we step back like maybe a year, like my, I think my parents moved out of Harlow and they moved to Sutton on Sea. So well, was that 1990 that you moved to Sutton? You're asking the wrong person. Yeah. You ask me about what year I went at, went where and what the, what I did. I have no fucking idea. You people know better than me. Like Jenny tells me all the time. Do you remember when we did this? I'm like, I don't fucking know. So I think that you moved in 1990 because we were riding together a, a reasonable amount. Yeah. And then suddenly you just you move into like. Well, well, sure, what, I didn't join the circus. Well, I called Skegness. <laughs> that was another time. So, but, you, but Sean lived down here. Yeah. So you must have right. him here first. Oh, right. So, yeah. So, no. No, you I didn't. up there. I met him up there. Okay. I met him up there. I thought my parents maybe moved in 89. Because that's why I was travelling about so much. Because I was like, I fucking hate being there. Yeah, they, yeah I might be. I so might they moved, like they moved early. Yeah, they moved early. And the reason why I was skitting about everywhere is because they moved there you didn't have a base no because yeah. I didn't see that as my base yeah. my base was down in, like in London with my friends who I rode with okay so so there was in so I lived in Sutton Sea so Skegness Sutton and Sea Mablethorpe yeah fucking dead seaside town Sutton and Sea was basically go there to die it was fucking horrible you know so I remember going to Mablethorpe because they used to have uh, beach racing on so like proper beach racing bikes and I went there and it was fucking madness all racing on the sand like flat out lunatics no brakes like speedway bikes yeah I was like this is awesome but right next to the, where the racetrack is there was a um, fish and chip shop and a bank and a wall I it, yeah. and I was like fuck yes there's a wall right here. so I'm fucking sending it wall right in and this dude just wanders over and he's like, ah, just watching in. It's like, kind of like, he's like, ah, all right, Zach? And I was like, all right, don't know you. And he's like, nope, but I've seen you at contests. <laughs> 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 and I was like, all right. And, you know, I'm like, and he's like, yeah, I'm Sean. And he's like, oh, yeah, just, you know, all right, BMX. And he had some Haro pants, you know, those Team Haro thing, the yeah. black ones. He had those on at the time. And I was like, what are we doing? He's like, oh, yeah, I'm racing. So I went and watched him race, and I was like, "What the fucking lunatic!" And then, and then, obviously, from that point, I was kind of knew somebody who rode, so it was a bit easier for me to be able to go back to my parents' place because then went to I rode from Sutton Sea to Skeg, which is 20, about twenty miles. <laughs> yeah, it was a stretch, and uh, and uh, he had a ramp. He had a, he at thirteen years old, he bought a. He'd not bought. At 13 years old, he'd made a fully fold down quarter pipe that you could tow from scrap metal and wood. So it was a fully, you know, so he had a ramp to ride. And also, there was a guy called Gaz who had a mini ramp in his back garden. That's right, I Yeah, so he was just like, sort of towards my side. He was just outside of Skeg. But yeah. So, so basically, Sean just, so, rocked, just, Sean just rocked up and was like, all right, like, like he'd known me. So you were like, living there when you met him? I thought yeah. you might have met him down here. No, first time I met him was there, because it was, it was like, yeah. Because BMX was dead. Yeah. So he just wandered up and said, oh, yeah. he was like, he knew me. And I was like, oh. Hello. <laughs> so that was it, yeah. Well, somehow, I, yeah, we... Because remember, I wasn't driving then. We, yeah, well... We I still ended, wasn't driving. We got the... We went to um, Waffle Pond Dern Street Jam. 
Oh, see, I, yeah, we went there. I went there with Sean. No, I went there with, with you. No, I thought we went there with Sean, and we were in his dad's we Nissan went. Bluebird. But this we went. Happened. Did we go? Go on in. You tell me, because everybody's <laughs> memory is better than mine. Everybody's. <laughs> we we ferried from here to Skegness to rendezvous with Sean. There was a, who's, whose idea was that? Over us to the whose place. idea was that? What? Fair evading and get. All the way from London to Skegness, yeah. yeah. We had to change the ground for maybe. And yeah. Another train. Yeah. Um, and then we we met Sean and Pidge. Yeah, Sean and, and Pidge. Yeah. Guys, and then we went to what? Yeah. Because uh, obviously, like, I remember going for a tunnel on his because he borrowed it. Yeah. And they were like, it, like the windows are open, there's a glass all down everybody's yeah. necks. <laughs> it just came in the car. And that yeah. was, that was like September or something in 89. And I remember that was being like cut off for like, it was finished then. There was like virtually yeah. no BMX after that. Yeah, it was like a ragtag bunch of people yeah. ended up at Waffle Pond Dern Street Contest it was a good yeah. one though yeah it was good yeah it was yeah. amazing yeah um, it's weird and then we went into 1990 and you was living in Sutton on Sea yeah now I might have transferred in 1990 up to Keithley then possibly I know I ended up living in Keithley and it was on, on, right on the top of Ilkley Moor up on a farm with Chris because we were just doing loads of street riding at the time, but I don't know. That was probably like six month period. Yeah. So, and we were saving up to go to America. And I ended up buying a bully. Big oh, mistake. Well, bully big story. mistake. That was a fucking big mistake. Should have gone to America. Fucking hell. Yeah, right. that lasted long, didn't it? So that after that, so you got that bully. You bent that. <laughs> <laughs> cleaning up. At the UK BFA contest. Yeah. You probably had that a couple of months. Yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember when you got it. it. Around this time, there was like the UK King of Verk. You remember that? Uh, which which one? Because it, it was a series, wasn't it? It was a series. That's yes, right, yeah. Did you, you didn't ride that? or did you, you did ride that. Probably did ride that. I probably did ride that, yeah. I think we did. Did you ride the Mansfield one? Yeah, because I wasn't in A group at the time. Probably, probably rode B group or something. I, don't, I can't even remember. Maybe I wrote, I don't know. You tell me. I'm trying to think of which. Anybody know? I don't know. I don't know what I did. Maybe you rode Mansfield I, I did, one. I did, I did ride the Mansfield one because. Um, with, with Hoffman. That was when we did the flare, right? Yeah. So I rode that one and rode in the demo with him. But I think there was ones before that. Cause you remember when Tony Hawk came over and did the. He did a demo in Mansfield and they had the ramp up then. Do you remember that? And when that was around Andy Brown time of evolution, yeah, and I, I, I don't know what year that was. Nineteen ninety. Yeah. Them contests were not. There you go. Them contests were nineteen ninety. Because that was outdoors when yeah, Tony was it. there, right? What Tony Hawk did a demo. Yeah. Because he was skating and. Probably, probably didn't get paid, but like they told him he was going to get paid, so he ended up in a in a like some sort of sports field in Mansfield no I think it was Mansfield there was one in Mansfield but that was indoors I think there was two I think there was two I don't know anyway. I, know I have no idea like but it was it was, it was one we went there and Gary McCallion came up on his bike and then he and he, and he burned off in front of us and drove into oncoming traffic because he got it wrong at the traffic lights I don't know if you remember that I can't remember yeah, I don't, yeah it was it was funny though but the, so, so we did we're at Mansfield, basically, and it's 1990. Yeah. Hoffman doing a demo, and he pulls probably the first 900 that's been done in, in the UK, and a flare, which has yeah. never been done anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that well, because I, I. You were on the deck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was happening then? Yeah. Do you remember? In what? Surely that's not a forgettable moment. No, well, like it was, it was insane. So basically, like, so Matt's come over to do this demo, yeah, and and like, Pete Noble's probably scheduled him to do an hour-long demo, like on his own. Like, do you like it's, it's hard enough to ride a vert ramp as it is for five minutes on your own, right? So he's Matt's come flown all the way over, and he's on the ramp on his own. 
and they're like what the fuck is going on so me and Tabron got on the ramp to basically fill time while he got his breath back and so that's why we, we ended up doing a demo with him we only asked like you know they were like we could see he was dying out there like he was absolutely smashing it like I've never seen anybody like he was absolutely yeah. in his prime you know doing 900s like higher than most people could air yeah, yeah, yeah. you know landing like glass like, it, like everything he did on that day was just like he was just in the zone so yeah that's how we ended up on the ramp anyway it was um and a lot of people end up on that riding that demo after a while didn't they yeah because yeah, people they realize they realize yeah, people who could ride the ramp a group will start getting up there you know yeah. but i think it was like yeah it was it well, was when you first time you saw that flare what did you think that that was something that you'd ever do or what, what was this? What was the feelings about like? So, so, so he did the, he did flip a flip first, right? Which was massive. Just, just launched it. It was it was it was. And I was on the platform like, you know, when when somebody does a flare these days, you probably like, yeah, oh yeah. And I mapped it, it there, and I'm like, it's like nineties, and he's like, and I was like, what the fuck? Right, okay, yeah, that's well, it's okay. So I'm watching it just. And like just thinking, well, well, that's possible then. He's doing it; it's possible. But he, you know, because nobody's done that on a half pipe before. But he took him probably four or five goes before he pulled. I think it four. Or, I think four attempts. Yeah. Because then he, then he did one, and it, and then it, like he did another, and then it. I think he, it, because I've, I've talked to him about this after the fact, years after the fact, and it was like he did one, and he dipped his shoulder, and then got a little bit of a sideways on, and it just. It just literally clicked in his head, like going forwards. Yeah. Because it was. Like, I, 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 I don't need to do much more. Yeah, I don't need to do much there. more, and I'm so he's so anyway. Whatever, fourth or fifth one, he he, he pulls a flare. You know, and I was just it was, it was shocking, and like, you know, you know, I was like as far away as you are now, like watching it happen, you know, real time, and um, I just you know you just start you are travelling. The whole time that I'm travelling, so I'm thinking about all this shit that's gone on this weekend, and like just thinking, well, what's, what's, well, if you can do it, if you can do it, one eighty, like, there's, it's not much, you know, you can just, you can, yeah, you, you, door, can, you yeah. go, you just open the door wide open for a whole bunch of new stuff, you know. I can't even explain it at the time. It's just like my mind was like, fuck, the possibilities is crazy, you know. So yeah, it was a proper eye opener, like you know, just fuck, what's possible. So yeah, that that was basically an anything is possible. Yeah, it was it was literally an anything is possible moment. Like because it, you know, like he blew everybody away that weekend. Let's make, make no bones about it. Matt, the way Matt rode that weekend, like because you see video parts, right? Think fuck, man, that's good. When you see somebody ride in the flesh like that, like he fucking, how many times did he crash? Fucking loads. Fucking loads. Like he was taking it. You know, he's doing like. I think it took him three goes still to 900. Like, yeah, because he, he he hung up back wheel and got flipped into the ramp. Like, but that 900 wasn't four foot. It no. was nine foot. You know, it was a fucking nine foot. Nothing nine was four foot. Yeah, no, like everything was nine plus. Yeah, yeah, it was like holy shit. You know, so yeah, that was. But him doing the flare was like different, like. So he just fucking blew the doors off the fucking barn. Like, you can do anything. You know? So, was that the same year that you ended up in Go? The magazine? The centre spread? Was that centre spread or was that just DPS? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know about it. Because, cause like, I, I remember... That's another one where somebody said, Oh, yeah, by the way, you're in the magazine. You're in Go magazine. I was like, nah. Because, like, the magazines go, you know, you have a hierarchy, don't you? So, you, you know, where you BMX... English magazines, yeah. yeah, and then you have your freestyling, yeah. you know, and like, or, or or whatever the other American magazines were like, and, and then obviously freestyling morphed into BMX. It was well, BMX action bike, right? Is it BMX action bike? Which is yeah, BMX, BMX action. action. Yeah. That's it. And then there's freestyling, and then freestyling morphed into Go. So Go was like, like I said, the writer's yeah. manual. Yeah. It was the magazine. So when somebody said, "Oh, you're in Go," I was like, "Ah, fuck off!" Now I know you've got sent the pages in Goat Magazine. I was like, because we were back to, where the fuck did you get the magazines from? <laughs> like it was dead, you know? Well, especially that one. Yeah. I and I was, I, like, think, I was like, nah. I think that them two events might have been really close as well. Yeah. Like the South Sea and the Mansfield. Yeah, possibly. Like, 
probably within weeks of each other. Yeah. But yeah, that, that, that was, yeah, it's probably. But yeah, I'd, 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 there was another one where somebody told me and I probably saw it months later. That was a good feeling, though, right? Yeah, man, it's like it's a game magazine. Yeah. I like, just, if you, you get a picture in a magazine, that's fucking awesome, mate. Yeah. Any magazine, you know, back then. But like, like, to get a picture in Go magazine. Especially that size. But it wasn't just the picture in Go magazine. It was like, picture, you take it out. It's like when we were kids, like, you get a magazine, you, you'd have your Radness Unlimited, you'd take that out on the wall. It was one, that was a, it was a centre, it was a pull out. Yeah. Picture in, in Go. I was like, Jesus Christ. What was that Noble's pick? Yeah, Mark took that, yeah. So, um, good, yeah. he's lost, lost negatives. We discussed that, yeah, because he's no, he sent it, didn't he? he sent it to Wizard, so Wizard when when they went hits up, they they so did the negatives for that. Uh, So then around like around this time, the backyard jams were were probably early early days. Yeah. Did you go to the first one? No. With the the big vert ramp and the midi. It was there was gap, wasn't there? Because I went, I buggered off to the circus, right? This yeah, this was pre circus. So I must have been there. I'd be surprised if well, I remember going. I remember going to the first one, one of the first ones, and it was a half pipe contest, right? And the yeah, half pipe was it, massive. Yeah. That's yeah. It, yeah. So yeah, I, went, that. yeah. I can't remember being there for some reason, but I would have went with you. Yeah. We went with Sean. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad your memory's as bad as mine. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and that was when things started sort of slowly changing and yeah. turning into something that was a bit newer. Yeah, exactly. Riders. Yeah, it was like riders were then. It's like it wasn't a magazine based direction, it was the riders were taking it in the yeah. direction they wanted to take it in. It wasn't It wasn't guided. No, we didn't. Then, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And then that was around the same sort of time we started going to Leon C skate park. Yeah. Yeah, because Leon C was Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. How did that transpire? Did we go to the Brazil like it suddenly put an event on or something? And then we were like, Oh, this place is fucking awesome. Nah. Or did we just was it by word of mouth? What? Yeah, I think it was because it was such a big skate park at the time. Yeah. Um, I think we just heard about it a, a few times, seen it in a mag. Yeah. And then we went, but it was already in its second version of the skate park. Yeah. They'd, they'd already shifted it around. It was a load of ramps in a line, and it was I remember it was oh, in right. RAD, and then they they'd made it into like that circuit. Yeah, yeah. Which is when we we started riding. Yeah. So was that ninety end of ninety one? Ninety 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 one maybe, yeah. yeah. <coughs> but we so we became local there basically. Yeah. Me, you, Sean. Yeah. Jerry used to come. Yeah. Perfect used to come. Yeah. But that was a bit after, it was mostly it Yeah, was it was us. Like yeah, it was us. Us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that was around the time that we was sessioning that, like learning loads of new stuff because it was all new terrain yeah and then you guys suddenly decided you was going to go to the circus <laughs> it was seem, it was pretty sudden as well because yeah. that was like there was three people that I rode two other people that I rode with you and Sean yeah and then you both got in the circus and I was like fuck you bastards what the fuck am I going to do now I didn't yeah. yeah so yeah tell us about the, the uh, well how this all happened so so around that time, we're all having to hold down jobs, right? We're only holding down jobs because we want to be able to ride our bikes. That's it. We didn't we we weren't we didn't have jobs. It wasn't a career minded thing like oh yeah, we're gonna have this job and I'm gonna make them, you know, best go of this job. It was like well, that pays me a few quid and uh, and then I can ride my bike and I can't I don't give a fuck about that job, you know. So that was what it was. So we were like, well, how can we have a job and ride our bikes all the time? And then I was like, we, we were in Harlow because we used to hang out with my brother's flat. We're all there, right? So and we were riding. I think you probably were in the car. And I think we yeah, I was, we yeah. drove past and I was like, why don't we just fucking ask for a job there, Sean? And he was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, like, you know, fucking Canning was at the circus and, you know, fucking Ellis, he went, he went to the circus. Greg Giotti yeah, went to the circus. I was like, why can't we do it? There's a circus there. So I think we went back to my um, brother's flat and had a drink and a smoke and we're like, yeah, let's go and ask him. So we just fucking got in the car and went went there and just was like, just rocked up, walked into sight and just saw somebody just who happened to be the owner of the circus, Martin Burton, Zippo, so Zippo Circus. And I was like, uh, yeah, what sort of axe do you have here? Like, he bulbous brass, didn't give a shit. 
And uh, he was like, he looked at us, he just didn't say anything, just looked at me and Sean, and he was like, why? What do you do? And I was like, fuck, oh shit. Uh, trick cyclists. That was the first thing I could think of. We're trick cyclists. And he was like, you know, that's exactly what I need. <laughs> Signed up, we joined the circus. <laughs> it was like literally like, it was weird but, and then he was like right so we went and spoke to him and he, and he, he, he was like he was, he, was, he, was a, he was mad so this guy built this circus so Zippo Circus human circus no animals right so this dude he'd been a street artist and he basically used to blow himself up in a coffin so he'd go in the street get in a coffin blow it up right yeah, he'd scare everybody you know so anyway, it went wrong and he burnt himself quite badly. So he decided he needed to do something else. So he ended up running, making the circus. Where was he doing that? Winchester. That sort of, that, that sort of yeah, area. Boy, yeah, so. yeah so, he, so yeah, he had a quite bad accident, blowing himself up in a coffin, you know, what way it go. And uh, survived, ended up thinking, well, I need other people to make my money for me. So he, he, he started the circus. Anyway, we did a trial, uh, went to Barnet, and we did a trial and uh, there was a guy called Ricky Deloro. So we took the ramp, so this ramp that Sean built when he was 13, ended up getting actually towed into London. And we did a trial, we take like a 200 foot run up to ride the ramp. You know, and like, Martin's like, you do know it's like a 20 foot run up. It's a circus, it's a small ring, you know. And I was like, yeah, okay, we can do that. And this, this old dude, Ricky Deloro, rode a tiny bike. He was like, okay, come guys, got us in the circus ring, got the ramp in there. And basically he said, right, you need to do this, this and this. What else can you do? And then we just put an act together and we joined the circus. I remember the ramp, you painted the ramps and stuff, yeah. Evil can evil, isn't it? Already you, you was billed as the Rampage Champions, weren't you? Yeah, and because... From Leon C. From Leon C, because it was a Rampage Skate Park and I'd won you the contest won there and Sean won one. And they were like, well, you need a name. You've got an act. You need a name now. And we were like, uh, well... He's won Rampage and I've won the Rampage contest and they were like, yeah, Rampage Champions! Yeah, yeah. So that was our that was our circus name. Well, <laughs> so how did you get up for the quarters then? I, I must have seen the show. Oh like, man, change like, of gearing. Times, change of gearing. Did. Yeah, because I was like running a 46-16. So I was like, shit man, I've got to get like an 18 tooth and a 44 or 40 on the... Like, just change of gearing yeah. so you could accelerate really quick. Because like, what people don't understand is like, when you do that, it's not always good ground. They chuck the coconut matting down on the fucking doesn't matter. It's it's like a swamp. Yeah. Coconut matting down. Like yeah, you ride it. And you're trying to ride through like you know. You, you've ever ridden on like like a mossy grass? Yeah. Well, imagine that ten times worse. Speed no. So that's what that was a circus. Yeah, it's like a fly off as well. Yeah. Well, that fly off was a ramp that John Taylor built. Uh, it's John for joinery when he was a carpenter. <laughs> he built a ramp for a rave. So oh, and then he was, yeah, yeah. So then he, he he didn't want it anymore. And then me and Sean got it and cut it down so we had to fly off. And then we used to do like come off the quarter pipe and hit the fly off and do like three sixties where yeah. our, our, our wheels would overlap because the ramp was only this wide. And that, so that's where you learned flips. Yeah, yeah. So so. Yeah, that was fly off. The fly off, I think the fly off oh, was the fly off was like this, and then we cut it down. Yeah. No, then we cut it down, yeah. and it was like half that. So it's like it was. Hold on, yeah, half that. So it's so I bet. <laughs> it so was pretty much two and a half foot. I it was it was tiny. So it was like yeah, okay, yeah. Let's learn flip flips off a two and a half foot ramp. If that, it was tiny. So I first tried flips off of that, and I had because it's a circus I've got crash mats because I've got loads of acrobats and when I say loads basically some Chinese people I don't know where Martin got them from he was... <laughs> so he's uh, and I, I, I managed to rope them in I had them holding the crash mat so I had this like Chinese acrobats like some lunatic on a bike it's like a big piece of metal coming towards them crash helmet a lot and they're like like, so basically the first few times it was just like they bailed you know like but I've landed on the crash mat and I, I didn't get anywhere you know I've probably got like halfway round just face planted because like I'm going off a two foot ramp and they're holding the crash mat the same height as the ramp yeah so I'm like trying to flip really fast so that's what we learn flips on you and Sean both like in the end I was like yeah you guys are good just put the crash mat down I'll just load them onto the crash mat 
I don't know what I was thinking. So we learned them off that ramp. Um, and then we decided we needed a ramp for flips. So we built another ramp. So basically we just built another ramp that basically was what we cut down. So we built, yeah, <laughs> just built the same thing again. And that, was, so, yeah. that ended up being part of the show then, the flip? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they used to they used to drag a crash mat right right at the end of our first year. Or maybe it was the first year. Of, yeah, right at the end of our first year, we would we, we put that in the show, like probably for the last month. Where we, we just they just put I crash they put a crash mat out and then like a like flip onto it and ride away and then Sean would try a flip onto it and probably end up with his bike in the fucking audience. With <laughs> 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 his wheel coming off and fucking bits flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and that, like not not long after that, then must have been when you was figuring out the three sixty flip. Uh, yeah, because once we built that ramp, like we got the flip styled onto the onto the crash mat, I was just like, you know, that that thing had always been in the back of my head from the, which wasn't that look, you know, wasn't that far back to Malfman's flare, and uh, I was like, well, you know, I just have to, and I spoke to the, the weird thing is, I spoke to the, I said, well, you know, I know it's possible because I've seen it done. And they said, and the guy, there was a, like a acrobat, and he said, we just have to just twist from the hips. And he just, just twist from the hip. And I was like, all right. First one I tried, I like did a flare. Like landed 180 backwards, dunk, almost rolled out of it. I was like, I did put, and it was like one of those things where you put no effort in. You know, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so, and then like, I started trying it. And like, probably within 10 goes, I was going, I was coming in to sit, like, like getting to the point where I'm like, Seeing the, landing, or yeah. seeing the landing but just not the ramp it wasn't the right ramp for it yeah. Didn't I didn't have enough lift and enough time to bring around the last rotation so I was like alright yeah that's possible and then you you must have had a break from the circus or something uh, it was, it was seasonal was it? no we didn't have a break we ended up then getting a job in Italy which was all year round Okay. So we drove to Italy and joined an Italian circus. What ramp did you have to build a ramp out there? No. We towed the ramp that Sean had built when he was 13 yeah. years old. Um, and, right, so so we left England. Right. I don't know what we were thinking. Typical us. So Sean in his van, me in my van that I bought from some gypsies, gypsies in South Ockenden, like snatch style. Rocked up, bought the van, left a deposit of the, the, this, you know, his mum's car with his mum, the guy who was selling it in the caravan, and said, I'll deliver it Friday. And I'll pay you the, you know, like, yeah, as a guy delivered it on Friday. And then I basically went to see Dennis's scrapyard, kitted it out, drove it to Italy, no tax, no MOT, no insurance, gone to Italy. And that's, um, yeah, we ended up in Italy working for an Italian circus, but we 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 barely made it there because we didn't have any money for fuel. Because I don't know what we'd done with whatever money we'd done in the UK, it wasn't a lot. So we ran we ran out of money driving there. The ramp broke. Sean's van was on its last leg, so I think it already had one hundred and fifty thousand miles or more on it. And his dad had, or was tinkering and keeping it going. Do you remember when it set on fire? I don't remember that. No, I remember. I remember many times. So we were driving to you know talking about Chris Hamer's going back a bit Chris Hamer's place so we set off from Skegness and the van he, he couldn't steer and Sean was trying to go around the corner he tried to steer and it, something snapped and then all the lights went out and then there was a, like a little fire underneath the dash and like basically we drove to from Skegness to Manchester on fog lights sounds familiar yeah know. so anyway that van we drove it to Italy so um, yeah, anyway, we drove to Italy, and that was all year round. Then so we just left England, and um, because you, you're right, it was seasonal. So we ended up getting a job. Three sixty flip was after Italy or in the middle. I think it was after it. No, it was it, it was in the middle. It was in the middle. But I think when was it? When was it? When was it? We went to Crowhurst. Was that in between us going? I think that was in between us leaving the UK circus and going to Italy. That's what I've got. I think it was the winter. Yeah. I know it must have been the winter because you were wearing you were wearing carrier bags on, on your feet. on your feet. Yeah. <laughs> <Gross>. <laughs> it was definitely the winter. Get me shoes dirty. It was ninety three. Yeah, so it was in the winter. So basically ninety three. We've got we've, so we've got this job and we've got this time to kill in, in the winter. And that's why we didn't have any money to set off really because we'd spent the money we had riding with everybody that winter. 
and the free flip you went to Croa specifically to do the free flip that no well no I didn't go to Croa to do the, to specifically to do it what happened is I went to Croa and then I think the f- I think the first time I went it was in that, that winter and I, like Baz was there and was it afterwards I can't remember anyway either way I, I jumped the jump was like fuck this is a good rap this is a lip, good yeah. lip this, this, this take off was loads of air time right and at that point it was one of those did a flip filming for uh, Angus. Angus that's it and I did a flip over the uh, off that ramp and I was just like there's shit loads of air time it was like that that, 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 that take off was probably two foot bigger and mellower and I could just go so fast at it and just slow the flip down I was like okay I've got time to do it it was kind of the first flip I did over that was like I think this is the ramp I think I probably told you it was like at the time I can't remember that funnily enough but I, I but remember it was like the last thing on a Sunday night but I didn't because I didn't go there specifically to do it but after I'd ridden there for like a day I was like got to come back because I could do it I've ridden there the day before yeah I can do it I, I know I can do it here so yeah. that was the spot where I was like oh, I think I can make it happen here and that was yeah that, that was the first one that was done and it was like not that many tries, if I remember rightly. No, it was like six or something, maybe five. I don't know. I think because it, it. I remember it was pretty quick, like. Yeah, well, because I, I think I crashed a couple of times. I think it was like maybe the day before, or like, or the week before. So I said I'll come back and because I said I was going to come back and get it for the, for the end of the video. Yeah. So I I'd, right. I'd crashed before, like, but I think I had two or three attempts, and I smashed myself, and I smashed my bike, I done my ribs, and smashed my back wheel. And then I think we went back there maybe a week or maybe two later on. And I think it was two attempts. I think one slid out. Might have been three attempts maximum, but it was a really quick. I was yeah. like, because it's not one of those, I wasn't doing it until I crashed it anymore. It was like, got to pull it because I'm going to hurt myself here. So I think, I think it was. So that, that was it then off to Italy for a year. Yeah. Well, two nearly eighteen months, two years. It was, it was a long. while. Yeah. yeah, it was longer than that. Yeah, and that was just pure circus riding. Yep. Yeah, yeah day and two strong. two shows a day, seven days a week. Uh, traveling around Italy, and we ended up going to Greece as well. You come back in ninety five. Yeah. Back to Leon C, wasn't it? Pretty much. Straight back on it. Straight to Leon C. Um, I did have to go back to. I have. To, I, I had to go back. I had to go and see Stu because I had a bike off him and I hadn't paid him. And I know he was miffed and I'd spoke to him while I was in Italy, so I had to come back and make sure I paid paid him up straight away for that bike. Stuart it's one of the first things I did when I got back to the UK is that I got to pay him up for the bike. You know, they, they hooked me up. I said I was going to pay him. I hadn't paid him yet. So I had to wait nearly two years for me to pay for a bike. <laughs> that was the backyard. Yeah, the days, yeah the exactly. Shop, yeah. yeah, that's it. Um, and then... So we go, we, we come back, we're riding, or you come back, you, you end up at Leon C. Yeah. And trails are starting to uh, happen at this point. Pinner. So we're ending up at Pinner as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pinner was good, man. Yeah, it was awesome. So, Pinner was well good. So that was 95. Pinner wasn't developed until like a bit, like 90, late 95, 96. I came back and it was like ready made. Yeah, but it wasn't. At its best point, it, no. In night when you had that, you had an interview in Ryan, and at that when you a couple of photos from that, yeah, GT. That spot was yeah, GT. Yeah, there, that was when it was really frightening. Yeah. Then, yeah, but we yeah, so we end up riding trails a fair bit. Yeah, but what about Spitalfields? When was that? Spitalfields was ninety three and ninety four, so it was around. So that was the in same between. Time flip, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was, Pinner was there, but it was one jump. Yeah. And then that was two jumps. Spitalfields was on its way out at that point. Yeah. Because that was also in Angus, I think. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. So, yeah, anyway, there was a skate park at Spitalfields. Which so, Pinner, Trails. Yeah, so, no, yeah. it didn't last very long, then. Pinner, Trails. And during that point in time, Northampton, Flair. Oh, Bradlands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Around the same point, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a weird one, that, because I'd been away, so did the 360 flip in 93? Yeah. Went away for two years, just basically 
just did show stuff. Didn't do anything other than show stuff. Then I came back and I hadn't done a flare. I'd done a 360 flip, but I hadn't done a flare. As far as my memory no, serves. That's right, that, but neither had anyone else in. I think anyone, neither had anyone else full stop, as far as I know. No. No. So it's 95. That's quite a while, isn't it? I think it was yeah, yeah. Well, beginning of '96, maybe even because it was like it was an early jam, wasn't it? In in at Northampton, I thought that maybe it was either the end of '95 or the beginning of '96. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. So what was the question about that with the the first? That was pretty much well. That was the first one done by a UK guy for sure. Yeah. Um, how was that? What, what, well, what was the because you tried a few on the vert ramp, but over a yeah, I did a 360 flip on the vert ramp by accident, yeah. Well, I, I kind of, you know, I know it was possible. I'd seen it, watched it myself, and I was just like, well, it's just it's just, just technique, isn't it? So it gave it, gave it on a vert ramp, which is really steep. Couldn't do it. Kept doing 360 flips. And then I thought, well, I'll do it on the quarter pipe, which is mellower, not as much vert. And it just it just worked. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. one shot on the quarter pipe? Yeah, one, one, one shot. Not bad. One shot, rode away. We didn't. I was lucky on the half pipe because that was Wiley Coyote. Those yeah, yeah, those totally. flare attempts yeah, just yeah, like. Oh, uh, if I hadn't landed on my wheels, if I'd have landed, you know, shoulder first or whatever, you know, or on my back, that would have been game over. But I didn't. So I had uh, luckily I had a few attempts at what yeah. what not to do and getting yeah, away yeah. with it. Yeah, you learn from that. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. To learn fast, didn't you? Yeah. No phone pits. <laughs> yeah, that was a, yeah. That seemed like a long period of time that people didn't really catch on to that trick. You think the first one was pulled in nineteen ninety? Yeah. Yeah, so Matt did it in nineteen ninety. Yeah, apparently people were trying it, but yeah. yeah. Where's uh, John from Kettering? Yeah, he was just trying to fake you that one. <laughs> How mad was that though? Like? <laughs> Yeah, so, but yeah, it was a long, it was, it, 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 the timeline is quite long because Matt did that in 1990 and then it's like 93, 360 flip and then it's yeah. like people were just starting to do Tumble flares. Ways, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was like just, just, you know, here or there. Flip fakies, but not really, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, I remember um, Tabron telling me actually that he went to Northampton, he went to that Badlands contest and they'd been, they'd been practising He'd been practicing flips. They'd been chucking mattresses underneath the, underneath him. Like he's trying it on a half pipe. And he said he got it dialed. And he went. He, he said he went to Radlands like supremely confident. Like I'm fucking winning this contest. You know, like I can do flips. And he said he went away from that contest like dejected. I understand. Leave the way, but there you go. Thanks, Siri. Um, yeah, he's like, what the fuck just happened? Like the flip was a contest he, winning trick. Yeah, he went there. I'm winning. Yeah, hands down. We've got this dialed, and he just went away. He's like, don't even know what just happened. Like, I thought I had this, you know, like in in the bag. I could do a flip, and like walked away and watching somebody do a, doing a flare. You know, like, he, he, I remember, yeah. So it was like, it was. I don't know. I guess it was. I, I got back and just wanted to send it a contest. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that was that was probably the, one of the bigger ones at the time. That was probably. a good one. That one. That was everybody was going yeah. big at that contest, man. <clears throat> and after after that, it wasn't long before you end up riding for GT. No, it wasn't. No, so I, I literally got back, and then within probably three or four months, I was riding for GT. Like, and I moved down to Bristol. How, how did that come about? Well. So, Matt Yo. Yeah. Um, so, oh, let me think about this. So there was, a, there, was, there was people on the team, and I didn't want to ride for the team because it had been discussed. I think it was like a timeline of probably probably six months, and I was like, it does not really a fit for me. And then everybody left. <laughs> I was like, and then Matt called me again. I was like, can you, can you, can you ride for us and maybe rebuild the team? And I was like, yep, yeah, I can do that. So that's what I did, okay, and then okay. and then you moved to Bristol. Yeah, because my girlfriend who I'd met on the in the UK was uh, a trapeze artist in a circus, 
she, her mum lived in her mum and dad lived in Bristol so I was like sweet when I, when I moved, into, moved down to Bristol with her and GT was based in Bristol oh nice so it was just a nice fit you worked in the offices as well yeah I, I went to GT as well I went to sales right at GT and then um, ran the ran the GT team with Matt. So Matt was kind of running the GT team, and then I moved like, moved to Bristol. Was in sales with Matt, both running the team together, and I'm riding on the team. And then, basically, I hated sales. It's, it's not for me. So they moved me sideways into marketing, and then we just I like, started running the air show stuff and getting the riders. And who, who did you put on the team? Uh, so it was um, Scott Stevens. We had Scott Stevens, James Needham for Flatland. We had uh, James Moon. Um, uh, there's a few other riders. Chris Aimwood flowed a bike and you know liked to come out with the shows. Sean Scarf, he yeah. was on GT um, doing the air shows. Um, who else did we have on the team? I had a quite a big team, I think, at the Michael time. Michael O'Connor on it. Can't remember. I think so. Maybe it was just before that, that period, but like. Yeah, well, I think he was, but yeah. He probably was. When you think about the riders who were just like pre me taking over the GT team, it was like Ian Morris, Jerry Galley, like Simon Tabron, you know, like. I can't even remember who rode from that point, yeah. I know Jerry and Ian. Um, yeah, I remember Yeah, yeah they were on GT, yeah. Canning. Yeah, Canning, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I like kind of, like after they kind of let that. that that finished and I took over from that point and just rebuilt the team from that point so I remember taking like I think one of my first things I was like convinced them like they need to give me a budget to go to the States so I took took uh, Scott Stevens and uh, James Needham to the X-Trials in Florida which just happened to be the X-Trials that uh, Jay Miron pulled the first 540 um, tail whip and like those two smashed it they, they got first place in the stunt boy like both oh, really? yeah so <laughs> Scott won park James won um, the, the flatland and I fucking bombed in pro street <laughs> when I should have been riding half pipe what well, how come you rode pro street instead of vert ah oh, fucking I don't know just that's what happened yeah, yeah. they probably didn't like half pipe didn't like the way it rode and for that I just rode street yeah. and like rooftop and I remember rooftop and that were like they just wanted to see a 360 flip <laughs> You know, and uh, um, Colin Winkleman, you know, just like, well, come on, I want to see for it. Rob, I was like, well, what is it, free, all I wanted to see was a 360 flip. I was just like, I just bombed. I was like, oh. Were you trying no. to crash no. no, I was just like, fuck that. No, I just, yeah, they, they, I, it, job done, took the guys there, they won. Yeah, so that's yeah, fair that's enough. Cool, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, first jolly on GT. It was good. Yeah. Well, I now need a piss. So, yeah. you rode a lot of. Uh, already yeah. you seem to get into a lot of other types of riding and then went back into the vert yeah because my vert obsession came from you know watching people send it on quarter pipes right, right back from the start and then Chinkford all quarter, all quarter pipe half pipe half pipe half pipe and then like I say it just kind of went away from that for a few years Circus. circus years other stuff yeah other stuff and then when I got back to Bristol it was Skate and Ride Skate and Ride was there with, with the vert ramp wasn't it yeah yeah ready like so it's laid on yeah it was just that it was there it was like indoor you know, ten, vert ramp indoor vert ramp 10 minutes from where I lived it rolled like literally drive down the hill I was at the skate park so um, and Simon lived in. There was a vert scene. Yeah, it was a vert scene already. Yeah, it was like, uh, it was like Ira, Ira Rainey, like. Simon Tabron, um, Seb Benison, um, uh, Scary Boy, J- Jason Davis as well. Jason Davis had probably already moved to the states at that point because he was okay. riding for Mongoose around that time. So I think he was. He's he, already he, gone. <laughs> yeah, he'd already gone. I can't. I can't remember. Like, maybe he was still there because. I can't remember if he was in states or, but he, he was probably backwards and forwards. I don't know because I remember maybe he was there. I don't know, but it was a good. It was it was a it's seriously a scene, good yeah, skate scene. scene. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry, a bike vert scene. Yeah. So that's where you got back into it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like just, you know, I just wanted to ride vert. Yeah. You know, and at that time, what people don't know about me probably is that 
way back, I had a quite a serious knee injury. You were there. Yeah, wrong. Yeah. Uh, wrong. Yeah. So I was probably only 16, 17 at that time. Yeah. And that, like, that was that's a career ending crash that I had. Like, I was, you know, like, I tore all the ligaments in my knee, destroyed the cartilage. Like, it was, and I was out for probably a year. Like, I was in a cast for. Yeah, I remember the cast. Yeah. Cast was like six months. Full so it was cast, like yeah. full cast yeah. from, like, yeah, from my hip down to, you know, for months and months and months. Like, it was a pretty bad injury. So, like, at that point, you know, I'd done all, like all the park stuff, all the jumping, everything else, and my knee was killing me. So, but when I rode vert, I got a respite from it because it's a lot, it's a yeah, lot yeah. more flowy, you know. Long so, style. yeah. So that's what I was like. Well, you know, and I, I, again, I loved it. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna push myself in this direction now. So that's that's. Yeah, I remember going to Bristol a couple of times when you lived there. And yeah. Suddenly you was like that way higher than you was before, yeah. Yeah, it was like, you know, every other day I was there. And then, then Vert sort of evolved quite drastically not long after that. Yeah. Well, you, you're talking about, like, events and... and or riding. you're talking about riding... How... What, what, did you, what did you, from your perspective, how did you see Vert evolve in that bit of time that you, was, you started getting back into it? Because it was that late 90s that, from my perspective, I see it change a lot. Well, I, I don't know, because I was in it. So it's hard for me to... Like, I'm, I'm in the middle of it. Like, so I don't have an outside perspective. So, I, so what, you know... So I would, from, from what I've... From what I can see, <clears throat> people going up and down, up and down, up and down, do a lot of tricks, they're huge, huge airs, massive five fours. things was like high and big. And then suddenly people started going from that side of the ramp to that side <laughs> of the ramp, and then opposite this side of the ramp, and then yeah. alley in that side of the ramp, and then all the tricks came and they fitted in to all of them, the, the ramp being used completely like not like a straight up and straight down ramp. No, so 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 you're absolutely right. So like, like we go to all the events, right? So we're at vert riders go to an event, and you have your vert ramp there, and your skaters vert ramp there. So we would be watching all the time, and I've always ridden with skaters, always, always, yeah. So I had maybe there's a few riders who had a different perspective on how to ride a, a vert ramp anyway. Um, but like you saw what was going on there and, you, and how much flow they had around the ramp and then you see what's going on there and it was like up and down up and down up and down and it just it had to evolve because it was, otherwise you just get stale so people you know you, you would start to you know um, go opposite like you know, fucking send, go, in, go into the ramp as fast as you can, go up in one corner and just try and use the entire ramp because, like, the guys who weren't using the entire ramp, who weren't changing direction, who weren't, like, they, was, they weren't scoring very well. Yeah, because it was, like, even the judges were, like... Yeah, no, it looks way... It yeah, looks like, because like, it's flow. Like, you yeah. know, the skaters, there's always a lot of flow and, like, the way they, you know, front side, back side, yeah, yeah. you know, use the whole entire ramp, you know, and I think that, that kind of being on the same site all the X-Trials and all, all the other events we did you know so we did all the Red Bull events as well and, and like we were all riding and skating together so I think it kind of it just morphed into that like f- more of a flowy it style more yeah it, and it feels not more natural as well it doesn't it, it feels it, it's really stale and really boring to drop in and go you know and it's fair enough in a, in a sports centre you know, when we were on quarter pipes, yeah. one on a half pipe, like it's two blank canvases. You know, it's like use it, use the whole bloody thing. You know, so that's that. It did. It, it, you know, and it was it was good to see. And there were certain riders who couldn't adapt as well. You know, just you could see they've just stuck in that. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I noticed that. Well, like what you say, that rolling as fast as you can and hit one corner. 
yeah. as high as you can go yeah. and then you envelope it from there yeah. like, then you spread it out yeah. yeah and then you just like expand upon that yeah. like you once you come if you if you go up right in one corner and you land like you're a lunatic if you go straight up in the corner opposite because yeah. you're on the edge of the bloody ramp you know like so you've got to go that way either right to left you know or let you know or alley oop or you've got to change direction and flow and then because because uh, like there's still riders who plan their runs you know and riding with flow and you plan your run it doesn't work you have to drop in and if that first ball goes well you know you're thinking about the next ball and then you land and that goes well you think about the next ball like and those riders would plan ten walls ahead and it never works. It, like in those guys guys you could tell were in the planning the runs and the guys who didn't plan their runs. So what, what if you drop in to do like a contest run? Yeah. How you plan one trick ahead or Yeah. That's well that's that's the way I've always I worked. Suppose yeah. If you ride it enough, you kind of you land something and you know what's yeah. gonna come next anyway. Well because it's like yeah, you, you, you kind of know what's gonna work. So you've got a bag of stuff that you can do. You know, it's like you know, it's contests where I drop in and it go really, really well and then I'd do something that I'd never done before. So like I remember being in, in like X Games in, in Brazil and like dropping in and the, the ramp was really hard to ride. It was like a metal ramp and it was like sections that were a foot wide and they cheated it like that. It was really hard to ride. It was on the beach, so it was sandy. Metal, sandy. And I just, just had a blinding start to a run and like I, I did an alley-oop um, and just went for an X up and I had so much time. I was like on the way in, just came back out and just did an O for it all the way in. And you could just do that, like, because I hadn't planned anything. Yeah. If I'd have been rigid and been like, oh yeah, after this comes this yeah, and this, and then you'd mind. be like, I need to do this. Oh, oh. And you you kind of like, if you don't land right, you still want to try and do it. And you can see those guys trying, but like the best way I think to, 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 to ride with flow is just not to have very much planned ahead Too and just yeah yeah and just see how if you land good you know you you know what you can do so that always worked better for me anyway but yeah you definitely definitely evolved into a much more flowy who would you say made that evolution happen quicker than what it would have happened if they weren't there <sighs> riders who, would do, who could do that um well that's a bloody good like question riders man who could do that a little bit because I, th- I thought Dave Mirror definitely Dave could do that put. but I'm thinking the Chicago guys Koji Craft um, Jimmy Walker Jimmy like that that Chicago crew like were just unbelievable you know like there's there's fucking good riders there you know and like Jimmy Walker was unbelievably good you know but they could do that like Jimmy Walker could ride both ways go as high as everybody else do all the tricks everybody else could do I don't know why you know maybe he couldn't put it together but you certainly watch him ride the ramp and you just feel like you'd never know what he was going to do next yeah you know he was good to bogan didn't he I remember that yeah he did I've, I've got pictures of him from like there's one of those guys I've, in practice I used to I go and I'll do a bit of video and video him and be like fuck yeah Jimmy's good you know I can't really remember much other than the bogans well to be do you think do you think Koji Croft ever planned the run didn't look like it no. He, no he no he just dropped in and was like it's going good I'm fucking sending it and like I'm gonna just that's why he was looked so frenetic all the time because like, even though he would use every bit of the ramp he just like don't fucking plan anything didn't know he was from Chicago either yeah so yeah I think there's a there's a there's a, there's a handful you know you saw when that, and that's how it is now right? that's, that's yeah. like the, that's the lasting impression that's yeah. how people write well, the, the second the second like Tabron threw away the making because he used to have he used to have Simon used to write his runs out the second he threw that away his style went from hmm Marmite to actually I think every, everybody pref- much preferred the way he started to ride when yeah. he chucked away making runs he just did he just looked better he looked more comfortable his style improved no end you know and he just started you know it's yeah, just it a better way to ride right, yeah you, you, you like memorising stuff like a robot like yeah and it, it, it yeah, goes it goes wrong and you're just like yeah. 
you know, can't compute, you can get it wrong, you know, you're hitting the wall like in the wrong angle or wherever, if you if you can adapt on the fly, you just fly around. But yeah, it is, it definitely, that was a change. I mean, like, like I said, you didn't realise it until you bring it up and say, oh, okay, there was a definite change. Yeah. And like, I was in the inside. Yeah, you're seeing yeah. tiny steps towards that, whereas yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at, oh, suddenly this has changed, especially yeah. lately, because I've watched a lot of vert contests. And yeah. They, they seem to have peaked in like early 2000s, that's like, fucking amazing. Yeah. Like as good as they are now, I'd say. So. It was like those mid to like 2000, to like 2000, for me it was 2000 to 2006. It was just like so many vert contests. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I found a, a Word document on my one of my old computers and I looked at the events I've been to and I was like, and I would only put down the events that I podiumed at or, or, or put, got top five. It was like fucking two sheets there's long a, <laughs> I was like holy shit there's quite a bit of you on YouTube actually like from those like this, I think I watched Cincinnati the other day or something oh one of the LG contests yeah yeah, yeah it, it probably wasn't one of my better ones no uh, one of no the, I watched something because that was after and there was a good there was some good and you was doing stuff that I've not seen you do before as well well it's, it's like you know you, because there was a gap in there when obviously when my children came around yeah like I I think I, Cincinnati was I'd had, I'd had Nearly. I think it was Cincinnati. I'd, I'd had nearly. Oh, they actually they'd mentioned that. I'd you, had nearly you know, a year yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Maybe eighteen out. months off. Okay. So I hadn't even hardly touched the bike. So that wasn't. I was stiff as fuck. They, they mentioned that actually. Yeah. You, you just come back. Yeah. And there was. I watched an Urban Games as well where you rode real well. I, I don't know what year it was, but. I did have a couple of good Urban Games actually. I think. You, I, you yeah. did X up five forty, X down five forty in one of these things that I watched yeah that's did I, I land alright yeah oh that's a surprise you landed <laughs> <laughs> so I did stop breaking bikes at some point because <laughs> I actually landed on a bit of transition yeah, no, you know that was a good one yeah <clears throat> so when did the vert thing sort of when did that start tapering off for you uh, well when I when I got married and, and like you know married somebody I won't go into it, you know, thought they were this and they were that, and that's when it tapered off really. It's just just like, you know, when you're going, when you're earning your living riding a bike, and then the person you meet says, oh, that's fucking amazing, and you get married and the person's like, where the fuck are you going? Hold on, yeah. I'm not going out to do my job, you know. Yeah, that's, it kind of tapered off then for me. I'm still doing all the events, but at the same time, you know, Maybe the other things that people don't know, like at the same time as riding, being a full-time vert rider, I ran the Vans Europe and UK teams that whole time. So eight years running Vans UK and Europe teams and uh, running four on four with Sean at the same time, running the events. What was the Vans thing? What what did that entail? Uh, Just basically making sure the guys getting their kit making sure they're, they're, you know, sending in details of what events they were going to, you know, and, and basically just finding new talent, making sure there was decent riders on the team who would fit that profile, really. Years were that, were that? 2000 to 2008. Yeah. Didn't know that, didn't know you was that deep in that. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so, then, yeah, so that... That's when you tapered out, and you've been riding vert contests for what fourteen years or something like them ones. Uh, Not including the ones. Sounds like a fucking long time. Yeah. 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 Like the newer ones. Yeah. Yeah. Long old time. What would have been what would have, the best ones you did? Do you think? A contest. Mm. Is there any, like any standouts? Well, well, from a personal point of view, there's always standouts of like a, like an event you go to. So uh, there was the 2000 Extreme Games in uh, Melbourne that I won. So, um, and that was that was a tipping point for me actually, because that kind of that was when Vans paid for a bunch of other riders to go. Nothing happened with those riders, and I had to pay my own way 
because they were flowing me stuff at the time and then I won the event and then when I got back they called me in and the call manager uh, Pete Derricks was like can you run the team please oh, right. <laughs> I was like yeah all right, yeah okay yeah pay me the right money I'll, I'll run the team as well as right so that was a standout one because that kind of changed that tipped sort of balance for me so I went from like on the cusp to winning that contest and then people saying right well, okay you know that kind of opened a lot of doors for me that did it's a bit weird because it was like uh, yeah I had to pay me own way there so yeah that is weird yeah yeah what bike was you on at that point then? <sighs> the tank or GT? yeah GT Tour that red one was it a red one? might have been a red one whatever it was that bike like at the time I thought it was the shit loved it my god what a piece of shit it's horrible like fuck I can't even like so I'm like I can't it's I took it to Rob let a load of people ride it it was it's horrific it's so bad especially looking at it now like wasn't oh, it bad back then was it you know well <laughs> that's a matter of opinion <laughs> yeah, no matter how bad it was it wasn't as bad as looking at it like from from nowadays no but, it's true but it's like but honestly you get on that bike and just like you I can't, I, I can't even fathom how I rode that bike the way I rode it. I tried to ride it in the pool last year. I took it to Romford. I tried to ride it in the pool. And considering that bike, I got over seven foot, maybe eight foot out of the pool on that bike. I was fucking scared to ride it into the pool. Yeah. It was horrible. You may, maybe you should tell us about the pool because that's a bit of an anomaly as well. That, what the pool? The story of the pool, Rump. yeah. I don't know. It's just one of those where I just always rode it. Like I like, I liked it. Just suited my style. So I, I don't know. I just like, I just like it. What is it? Straight up and straight down. You go in there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Go up. Go in. Take a line to the right. Cut in and go up onto the left. Straight. Almost, almost an alley oop. In in. Like a lot of weight on the right shoulder. Yeah. So you kind of letting the bike. It is, it is pretty much an alley oop. Yeah. You're trying to land on the same, exactly where you're taking off from, and you can't do that if you go, if you're leaning, if you if you go in and yeah, you're no, and you're going to the right, you've got you've got, got, to you've, got you've got to go up to the right, go in and kind of cut in and go back on yourself to land on the same spot. Is, it? You think you can go higher in that, or is that maxed out? Oh no, there's just, there's always more in it. It's just what your body can let what you do. Think about that bump at the. No, that's all right. Yeah. So if you land smooth, which is the hardest thing, it's, it's all right. But my like literally, it's the. I mean, the bump going into the air, like. Oh, that's all right. That, yeah. That's all right because I don't really feel that. It's the it's the. It's just my, the, the, how much my knees can physically take. Because like when I ride now, I've got two knee braces, right? So all the time, but like, the only thing stopping you going higher in that is how much pressure your knees can take, from pumping in and pumping out and it's I don't think there's much more in it maybe you go, maybe you go nine foot you know there's not a lot more in it and when did you start going high in there like what, what do you I don't know I don't know because I didn't really I didn't really you didn't go I didn't pay it no I, even 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 the that picture that um Kai. yeah that Kai took or no that um Ricky Adam took oh, okay right because Kai's got some good pictures and Ricky Adam's got some good pictures like, I didn't think much of it that day because I was just riding the pool because I'd always ridden the pool. So I didn't think, oh, yes, okay, I'm going yeah. high in the pool. I was just like, I'm just riding the pool. I was like, but I'd like to go quite high in the pool. So I pushed myself a bit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't see it as, as oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's four foot high and I've ever seen anyone else go. Yeah, well, you don't like you hear the stories, and like you so said, we talked about just Darren Forth, right? Yeah. And like, people talking about like him going super high in that pool, but like no performance he was, wasn't he? Oh, I don't know. You know, it's always yeah. get twisted over time. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's just the pool's. It's just nice if you hit it right. It's nice. You know. It is though. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me like that. It is. <laughs> if you hit it wrong, you're fucked. That bowl will fucking oh, exactly what, chew you up and spit you out nice quicker than you can blink. No one else is gonna call it nice. No, no. How did you find? How did you find it, Dees? Scary. Yeah. 
<laughs> and what about like in the verb contest? Like, was how intimidating is that riding against those guys? Uh, or don't you even think about that? Well, no, you're riding with the same group of guys every weekend. So it's like when I used to go to Chingford. Yeah. Go to go to Chingford for the weekend, hang out with the same group of guys. Um, it's not intimidating. It's actually the worst thing about it is knowing what's about to go down because um, none of those guys on that ramp are scared at all to send it right so and we did that for year after year after year after year the worst thing is watching your friend eat shit because vert it just if you crash bad on vert it's going to take you out for months and months and months. And like what started happening towards the end was with Vert, you, you ride it and ride it, ride it, and you get a little bit complacent and it, it fucking bites hard. And then, you know, I see quite a few friends just, you know, like serious head injuries. You know, Jay Eggleston, serious head injury. You know, guys just fuck themselves up, you know, like, and be out for not months, you know, a year, you know. So, yeah, it's it's um yeah. It's just like riding with a group of your friends, but it's just the scariest thing about it is is you know the consequences because you'd see it happen. You'd see it happen once every other contest. Superhuman level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and that's why I, don't, I mean, like Nyquist stopped. So, and I remember having a conversation with Ryan because he's a bloody good vert rider, right? And he just was like, I don't want to crash on vert. I was like, you know, I was just, every every event, I'm like, come on, Ryan, come ride the vert. He's like, no, I don't want to take a crash on vert, and that's that he, he, that's how he justified it. Like, you know, like I don't mind. I can get off my bike in the park, I like, jump off on the jump box. Yeah. Like vert, you wake up on the flat bottom if you like it. You know, if you have a crash, you take your front wheel. You're gonna wake up. Yeah. Like, whoa, what happened? And I did it at the X Games myself. Like just on on a storm of a run, like four hours in. Just woke up like Kagi. Kagi poking me. Oh, is that you all right? What did you go down there? Alley. Just, just an alley. Just tag. Just just started on a blinder. And I think it was like third hour. I did a flare. Went up into the corner and just like thought I just carve a nice big alley oop and then just woke up on the flat. Wow. It's like shit. Got you know like half a run. Got eleventh in qualifiers. <laughs> so yeah, and that was the same one where Matt Paul did the nine hundred. Oh right. So yeah. What is Chad Keg? He's still riding, but. Um, well, you know, it's like he's a bike rider. You can't ever put the bike down. I don't know if he's riding, but but he's probably still riding. He was no, Chad. The footage, I'm watching, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. I remember when um, because I brought Joey Garcia over when when I worked for GT. I brought Joey over. And Chad came with him because they used to ride in Gilbert at the ramp. I think ramp. I remember some stories about yeah. Bristol, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny, brought those two over. Yeah, that's a weird, uh, that's a weird way to go because he started out really trail riding and jumping and then yeah. he ended up like a bit of a vert warrior, you know? Yeah, but like when he came to the UK, he hung out with me. That's where he got into it. With and him. Simon, and he just like, you can you imagine like for, we probably bullied him for three weeks like come on you can do this you can do that and I remember going to the American contest and being like he is riding park and we're like you know me and Simon were like just get Chad to send it because Chad was just a, a hucker at the time you know like he was skilled but like he, if you say to him Chad we know you can do this come on and we convinced him he could do a 900 on a quarter pipe and we were in uh, you know where uh, Jimmy Levan jumped out of yeah, out of park sure. and they wanted to eject him well at that one I think it was that one we got Chad to do a 900 on a quarter pipe did he pull it? no <laughs> <laughs> he was just fucking sending it he's so good he's just like really you know like, like Joey had all the flow but Chad was just a sender you know yeah, like he didn't want to scare him nothing Oh yeah. So then he got into vert and like, well, you know, look how good he got. Yeah, well, he got. He got fucking one of the top guys, didn't he? Yeah. 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 So and the and the vert riding is what spawned the biscuit. Oh for fuck's sake! 
Yeah, it did, yeah. It, it did spawn a biscuit. Urban Games, photo from the Urban oh, Games. From the urban game. <laughs> yeah, photo from the Urban Games. You know, jeans tucked into the sock. Typical Shaw one footer, you know, grizzed out. Ended up on a biscuit on a suit in a supermarket chain in France. As, as you do. How you did know. you find out about that? Uh, got a phone call from Bart de Jong. All right, Zach. Hey, Bart, what are we doing? I'm in France. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because I'm at a friend's place. Yeah, that's good. I'm eating a biscuit. Yeah, you're on it. I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having breakfast with my family. He's like really long and truncated. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm eating a biscuit. You're on it. I'm like... Fuck off, Bart. You know, like, because cause Bart ran the GT, European GT team. So we we were on the G, European GT team at the time, yeah. anyway. Like, so I've been friends with Bart forever. Anyway, it turns out he was absolutely right. He said, look, I'm telling you now, it's either you or the only other person it can be is Beswick. And he said, but I'm telling you, it's you. I was like, bullshit, send me the biscuits. So he gets home, and fucking a couple of weeks later, he's, I get a packet of biscuits. Yeah, fucking... I'm on a biscuit. Chocolate biscuit. Lovely. <laughs> Fuck's sake. So what was the story there? Did you, uh, uh, did you, did you pursue that? Or? Yeah, I tried to pursue it. Tried to pursue it. Uh, supermarket was uh, Carrefour. French. Massive, oh, yeah, yeah. massive, massive chain. Like Tesco's over here. And uh, basically, they, they got their fucking well-paid lawyers onto me. You know, and and basically said all we're gonna do. You know, they near they pretty much admitted that I was right and that they had done that because they stopped selling the biscuit. That's what they said they were gonna do. But by this time, they probably made billions of them. You see, some desisted them. No, I didn't. They ceased and desisted themselves, so they didn't have to pay me out. That's what I mean. Yeah, and it was like anybody who's seen it is like. Yeah, and I had the original photograph, and it's not that. It's 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 literally all they've done is silhouetted it, and you can tell it's me. Now, how, how was that used for a, an Urban Games advert or something? It was used for so, some Red Bull advert sessions. It was used for like party invites, come to the extreme party, like okay. in the Czech Republic. It was fucking used for loads of stuff. Like I literally, it was it'd be like once every month, somebody would contact me and go, "Oh, look at this." You know, like the other one was a T-shirt, a mongoose T-shirt that, that they sold in Walmart. Said mongoose had the same fucking picture on it. Me doing a one footer, like not even silhouetted. <laughs> Cunts didn't get a penny. No, like, and I chased that company as well. And like, they 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 basically just disappear off the face of the planet when they're about to pay me out. Fucking T-shirt company in New York. But if it was best when you'd be swinging, the pranks would have been swinging. <laughs> He doesn't pull a break. And, and and he wouldn't have had his jeans tucked into his sock. Yeah, true, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So yeah, I did end up on a biscuit. But how come you don't pull a break when you, you pull a break when you do that one for a while? I just, it just feels good. Because okay. you're leaning on something. I can do it without. Yeah. So. Most people do it without now, but you, you yeah, but most people haven't got fucking knees like me. Yeah, that's true. So, like, so, like, I know there's a stable platform. I know exactly where the bike's going. I can push it out. But, like, you know, I could do one for inverts, yeah. swing crank. It's a, it's, but it just it just looks like my knee shouldn't bend that way. It probably shouldn't. Right, that takes us up to pretty much current day. So, so you, what's your day today now? Ah, uh, retrained as a Mac engineer. Needed a sedentary job after smashing myself to bits for years. So... When, when did you start that? Um, well, I started uh, working for a company um, who trained me on the job whilst I was riding. So I was doing weekends. Like, I think it was... Um, do you remember the Relentless Tour? Sure. Did it, yeah, so the Relent- yeah. Relentless... So basically, it was around that sort of time, maybe 2006. So I was riding, still, still riding, still doing events, still getting paid by the companies. Um, but working a nine to five retraining as a Mac engineer at the same time. So basically, I transitioned over whilst I was riding. Yes, slowly evolved into it. Yeah, How, how's yeah. That then? Yeah, it's good, man. It's like you know, keeps me busy, keeps me um, on my toes as well. Like you know, mentally, because you have to learn new stuff all the time. So there's always um, 
I've always stuff to learn. Um, but I like it. I like, I like doing that sort of work, you know. It's enjoyable. Friends keep uh, getting on the case about computers. It, pa- well. it, it pays well, and uh, yeah, 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 it pays well. And basically, all my friends would use Max and like just get in touch, you know, they, they, they get in touch and like yourself, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Max not working. Zach, the Max not working, you know. Mr. Heyday, same thing. And you still ride, but you don't ride vert as much. Yeah, still, well, I probably don't ride it as much as I should do. I haven't touched a vert ramp in ages. I went what to... Last year, right? Nick, was it your birthday again? Was that the last, last... Yeah, July. Yeah, okay. So the last time I touched a vert ramp was for the next birthday session. But, um, but the, thing, the mad thing is you get back on it and you're like... I don't need to do this more. Like I went to the new Folkestone Park, you know, Fid and Nick the other week. Like rode the vert bowl there. Fucking, so lo- fucking loved it. it. It's <laughs> not like fuck. This is scary. It's like I want to do this more. Yeah, the worst thing about it is you get the I want to do it more. Well, like you just like, as soon as I get back at like at Folkestone, I was like riding the bowl, thinking, you know, and you're calculating like. How much faster can I go into it? How many? I know I can go way higher in this bowl once I get, it, you know, once I once I know where to go in it. Like you, you, you kind of, yeah. You're already thinking, oh, I want to go higher. I want to, you know, this feels fucking amazing. How high is that bowl? Nick, how high is the bowl? Oh, I've asked him already. I wanted, yeah. I wanted you for the more calculated. Uh... <laughs> I don't, it feels like eleven. It feels it feels like eleven. I might I could be wrong. I'm not sure. It's yeah, but I'm short, Nick. So everything looks big to me. <laughs> oh, man. How big did Fid say it was? I did I'm, I'm trying to like compare it to like. I thought it was like Vicky Park. Not only been there, right? or, or Boiling, but. Yeah, it feels similar. Is that 10? Yeah. Feels similar. But then you've got to remember, like, I haven't really touched big transitions. Birth, well, Since next birthday. Big no, it won't. It's like 11. Relatively small. Yeah, it's small. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. It was like the last, the sort of, I think there was a, I'm trying to think, like now I'm thinking about the biggest bowls I've ridden. There's one in Hamilton in New Zealand, I wrote, went, 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 I did a tour with Asato, and it was like, I think it was about 13. So you could hit it so fast, but I didn't have, I didn't have any pads to crash on or anything, so. Eight, three, eight inches. Bullshit. That's the transition. There's no way that's eight foot and eight eight inches. It's two two point six five meter deep. Deep. Yeah. There's no way it's eight foot. Well, it's nearly nine. Yeah, it's nearer than eight. Well, hold on, hold on a second. I've got footage here. See, because oh, I looked at the footage and I, I thought it didn't look as deep as what Nick was saying. That's why I wanted. To. But if you can't never tell when you're just looking at some footage. No, well, I mean, I've, I I can still contest that I'm short, so I look bigger, but, you know, yeah, if it's nine foot. foot ramps. <clears throat> yeah, with like the competition ramp, like, ended up being like 14 one. Yeah, that's it. So, I know, yeah, it wasn't as big as that, but like, it did feel like 10, 11 to me. But we'd have to, we'd have to check that out, Nick. I'm yeah, not... yeah, I reckon, because I stood up in the shadow and we reckon that was probably about five, eight. It yeah, was, it was near on six foot, wasn't it? Yeah. And the shallow. There's no way it's just two foot yeah, bigger. It's five foot five, yeah. Yeah, but you stood in there, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And it was I, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I think they're wrong. It's Vicky Park special, isn't it? It's this big. No, it's not. Like, it felt bigger. Because it's, it's like... Didn't have to take it easy in there. But, okay. How deep's... Uh, uh, the performance belt run. I couldn't even answer that. Ten. Mm-hmm. Right. How mellow does that feel? Terrible. My bank. <laughs> yeah. So what about the pool? How deep does pool look wrong? Pool look wrong. Eight. Is it though? Less. No, but is it eight though? Because like, if you stand in the drain at the bottom, or is it nine? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that. Felt bigger. I only see that from the outside. So I'm saying 10, 11. 10 and a half of compromise. They 
Black Mirror guy. Yeah. How did that happen? So, um, so I used to ride with uh, Ali Cans, skateboarder. Yeah. So, um, and I think it was one of the first UK skaters to get on Birdhouse, actually. So, like, his missus, Lorna, um, she had her own PR company, Radiator PR, and uh, she said, I think she had, she had to, and so basically, because I was friends with Ali, the BMX stuff used to come in, she used to go, I was like, can you do this? You know? So I used to get quite a lot of work from, from that. And then she said, oh, well, we've been contacted by um, a claim, and you know they they they're bringing out this game, and they want something to help do promotional work for it. I was like, who, who is it? She says, uh, well, Dave Mirror. Dave Mirror. I was like, well, yeah, fair enough. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's fair enough. And then she said, uh, she said okay. I said, well, I know Dave. I give him a call. So I called Dave. I was like, oh yeah, they've asked me to do some promotional work for your uh, for your game. And he's like, that'd be fucking awesome if you were in it. And I was like. Yeah, that would be awesome if I'm in it. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I literally just called him. I was like, yeah, they've asked me to do this promotional work for your game. He's like, yeah, well, like, it, make, it would make sense if we had a UK rider. Yeah, it'd be fucking sick if you were in it. And like, so then he made a call. And then the next thing I know, like Simon Smith, right, from McLean, was like, yeah, we need you to come in so we can talk about doing a contract and getting you in the game. And he said it ties in with doing all the promotion and Dave's into it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. So literally within a couple, it was like Lorna got, Lorna got in touch, then I spoke to Dave, Dave spoke to a claim, then the claim got in touch with me, and then within yeah, within four weeks I was in the game. Are you the only UK guy in it? Yeah. I didn't know that, yeah. I think so. That's pretty mad. So it's like Dave, Scott Wirch, Joey, is it Troy as well, wasn't it? McMurray? Fuck no, I yeah. Who was like, it's on, it's on Dave. Dave's brother. Yeah, Dave. Uh, uh, God, that was about a bad away. Can't even. Troy McMurray. Yeah, Troy was in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Did they, and, Sean and, and, Butler. Sean Butler in yeah. Dave's game. I'm sure Sean Butler was in it. Sure, he wasn't in TJ Lavin's game. No, no, he was in it. Was he? I'm sure he was. But yeah, it's uh, Mike Laird. Keenan yeah. Hawkins. Kenan Harkin, Kenan was in it, yeah. Yeah, Dave here and Ryan Nyquist. Of course Ryan was in it. Fuck. Mike Laird, That'd be the first one. No, Sean Butler. It was because it was the, it was the second one, so he already had the first game Lee out. Ramsdale. Yeah, Lee was in it, yeah, Sean of course. Sean Butler. Wow. Yeah. Brass tax. <laughs> wow. So did you get to play like any of the like pre builds or anything like yes, that? Yes, I've got at home I've got a pre build disc. I've got one of developments, like final development discs with just writing on it from the mirror game at home. And did you have to write, did that, you have to write for them to get that foot, how did that work? Did they do any capture? No, see this is a great thing, so it was, uh, I think, so probably, I think Joey might have done some cap, motion capture, so I was talking about going, me going to Woodward to do it, and they said actually we don't need to do it, because We've got most of the motion capture from, I think they did three different riders possibly. So I think it was maybe Joey, Ryan and Dave. So you've got three different styles. And they were just, they were like, right, we just need like high quality photos of you. And then they just map it around the, the, the frame, that was it. That was literally, I didn't I didn't have to do a thing. Wow. But I got in with the contract I had to do all the promotional stuff. But that was even better because they flew me around for three or six months to all the launch. Every time the console launched, and that time at that time it was like there was, there's a battle of Sony, Nintendo, and Xbox launched, right? So big deal. Xbox chuck like Microsoft chucked a shitload of money at doing that. So every time anything Xbox happened, they were like, Zach, can you come and do this? So like I played, you know. I played computer games like with, you know, Richard Branson, Jonathan Ross, Johnny <laughs> Vegas, <laughs> like you know, like at the launch of like whatever uh, Virgin Megastore, you know, and like and then I went to they flew me to uh, 
the European launch and we went to like Pierre Cardin's house on the coast in fucking wherever it is like in the south of France it was just like the fucking I did some insane stuff that was like ah shit you know cheers yeah literally right place right time so you you riding in that game does that look like you riding or does it not look like you riding like is it just computer riding or is it what's the what do you think of that uh, I don't know I've never even seen it I don't it, know. It's, it's not your riding style because they've not done motion capture that's what I figured yeah yeah it's it's Dave Ryan or Joey I think Joey did it Joey will set me straight on that but um, yeah it's kind of weird it doesn't really totally translate because the bike no. can just go flip flop like that from yeah like left to right and it just yeah. it, was, it was like the skate engine with a, with well, a bike wasn't it yeah and, and that's I don't because there's two camps in there the Matt, Matt's game yeah. Dave's game you know but they both use engines from skateboard games right yeah. so but there's like I think the open world of the Dave Dave's game like a lot of people seem to be able to bash out the tricks easier and that game engine worked better for bikes than than the game engine for Tony's game for Matt's game like it seemed to translate better on onto the bikes so whose was Dave's taken off then so Matt's was taken off Tony Hawks. Yeah. And Dave's was taken off. Uh, I can't. They had a claim that it's yeah. might be called Skate and Destroy. Or no, I think it was uh, Mortal Kombat. I think uh, they took that off. <laughs> <laughs> Finish your move. Um, and yeah, tell us about the uh, the accordion flip. Oh Jesus Christ! That yeah, that put me out for a little bit. Um, so backyard jam, like five. you tell me the year. You t- five. Yeah, Are you talking about how much I short myself for the year I did it. I'm trying to think of what year it was. It was I don't 95, know. I think. I think it was '96, actually, because yeah, I think. It was oh, that's a good one. Was it? Climber was '95. Oh, it was '95. Okay, no, so we had this discussion about climber. So it's '94. 93, 94, beginning of 94, me and Sean, we were working on a circus in London, and we left, but before we left, we thought, we can't leave him in the lurch, we've got to get somebody in to cover us, right? So we covered us, so we covered us in a circus when we buggered off to Italy, Phil Dolan and Dave Clymer. <laughs> yeah, uh, of all people. Anyway, so back to that, so let's call it 96, just for whatever sake. But if you want to be, uh, you can have whatever you no, want. Go off, go off. Right, I don't know, 95 then, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I told you I'm terrible, I've got really bad memory. Um, yeah, it just went in too fast. The, the easy thing is, it's like it was the same sort of takeoff as Crow Earth, not nearly identical. It was adjustable, though, I think, that takeoff. Yeah, well, I didn't know that. So I was just like, yeah, same, same takeoff. Um, and there's probably a two year gap. But didn't you? Did you try two of them? Or one? Did you try two or did you just flip it first? I just flipped it first. Oh, okay. I think I did a one handed flip first. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, just went for it and just just flipped too fast. And, it, and on a 360 flip, it's like you got to take off like almost like you're not going to do a flip. You just got, it's like a really subtle lean back and you put all the effort into roll, get, roll. getting a 360. Yeah. Um, I just flipped too much and it just and I thought yeah I got it and then the ground just went away from me and it's like it was well, like you did get it <laughs> no I fucking took it all right yeah no I, I yeah it just went it just literally just tagged the back wheel just enough to accelerate me into that into that nicely compacted really hard landing and that yeah. sent you to hospital yeah it sent me to hospital but strangely enough I didn't do anything at hospital I ended up Nearly getting into a fight with a drunk bloke who was abusing the NHS staff there. Couldn't, I could barely stand. And uh, yeah, no x ray, nothing. Just, oh, you fell off your bike, off you go. So, did you send you back? Yeah, sent me out. It's like, sent me out. That's it, no x rays, nothing. Still haven't, I still went out, haven't had my back x rayed at all. Is it kicking off? Well, is that the ambulance coming to get me for me, for me X-ray? Star Wars compact. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they're not compacting my car because I park badly or something. Like, did you like, 
Did you like have some serious bruising from that or something or what? No, well... Because it was brutal. Mm, I don't... can't remember. Yeah, it's a common theme here. I can't remember. Yeah, I probably did have bruising. Uh, the bruising, the worst bruising I got from a backflip crash was the one for the Honda advert that's in Nails in the Coffin. That's probably the bruising oh, yeah, you're yeah, thinking okay. about. Yeah. That was extensive, comprehensive, fucking black balls cock the lot bruising halfway up my back to my lap well, like it was black flip. yeah yeah well when when somebody's driving a car through a set of ramps at 30 miles an hour you want to make sure you're taking off before they you know you want to be in the air before they go through the ramps so I just what do you mean you're going through the ramps the marketing manager Chip Rimmer at, Hon- uh, at GT right was like Oh yeah, we've got to do what the photographer wants. You know, this prick was saying to me, "Oh, can you do a slower, like a lower flick? Cause you keep going out of my shot." And I was like, "You're a fucking idiot." You know, like I'll I'll go as fast as I want to go, so I can so I clear this. Anyway, the guy was saying, "Well, we need a bit of movement because obviously me back flipping a car wasn't enough movement for him." So Chip was like, "I'll oh, drive the car through the ramps." So he's driving the car. What, through the, the, what do you mean? The ramps are set up? Yeah, the ramps are set up like this. Yeah. He's driving the car through the ramps at 30 miles an hour while I'm trying to backflip. and have so got to time it. Yeah, and the gap was like this. So So he's got to time it as well. It, yeah, because if he had hit yeah. the ramp, fucking could have killed me, right? So I'm like, let's move the ramps. Let's move the ramps. I want you to have some room, Chip, because, you know... He, he was like Frank fucking Spencer so and if you ain't old enough to know Frank yeah. Spencer he's like he's a disaster and whatever he touches so I moved the ramp side a good foot and a half two foot of gap between the car so the gap's pretty wide the ramp's already pretty big anyway because they just were Chris ain't yeah. built them actually I bought them off Chris yeah I fucking went really fast that year. I was like fucking I've got Got to make sure I clear the gap now because the gap had gone from like. So you you <laughs> made the gap four foot bigger. Yeah, it's a, it's a easy Pretty four much. foot. Yeah, four, four or five foot bigger. Yeah. And you haven't tried to flip the gap yet. Nah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Did you straight jump it? No, just flipped it. Well, what's the point in fucking straight jumping it? I've only got to then go round, fucking ride really, uh, ride, yeah. ride, ride, ride really fast. Yeah, and have him drive the bloody car through the ramps again. So anyway, so I go for it and I cleared everything on a flip. Straight jumps, shouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> so I just cleared everything, just backflip the whole lot, and basically I probably touched the bottom of the ramp with my back wheel and did literally what I did at the backyard jam onto concrete, onto an airport runway in January yeah onto my back that's that where that bruise from yeah and that's you that's you that bruise in the video I think is four weeks afterwards of the initial injury yeah so and insult to injury so after I'd arrived around on the floor with the photographer shouting go around again and I'm working on the floor like Chip was like yeah I think that's a wrap I'm off fucks off in the CRV yeah I'm like already like John Wayne just like no I'm, I'm good I'm good adrenaline's still going left me to load the ramps back into the fucking GT van and that was it I was off for weeks weeks and weeks and weeks just laid up I'm, but I, you know you know when you you crash and then your adrenaline's still going and you get home yeah, right. and then you're just like I'm done you know but I was done for weeks like it took me a week to be able to get to the hospital what would that say Oh, that looks bad. Off you go. <laughs> Stand standard. Like, well, you, well, you walked in here, so it can't be bad. Plus like, yeah, but tune on that human accordion. Yeah. Fucking madness. Can't be bad. You walked in here. I'm not going to tell you how much this fucking hurts, and it's taken me a week to get here. I started walking a week ago. You no. Know? <laughs>